All right, everyone, we are back with another episode of Speed Runs from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror Halloween hotfix. Well, I guess it's not really Halloween anymore, because that was the last time we were here, but it's still spooky nonetheless. So, the theming of this show is actually going to be a little bit meta, I suppose. I was watching the GDU hotfix, and I was watching one of the new shows that came out. It's called Legally Cute. So you have a lot of adorable, a lot of fun stuff. I like cute things. And uh, I think uh, I read during the uh, comments, the uh, the chat, you chat. That so uh, I guess they said that the opposite of legally cute would be speedruns in the crypt. That idea made me laugh. So today's theme is illegally cute. Uh, the general idea is things aren't always as they seem, and the devil is in disguise quite often. Uh, so that being said, our games for tonight are going to be Amori and Yomawari, both rather adorable games. But as they say, uh, well, what, what is it? the devil is in disguise, and things aren't quite as they seem. Anyway, our first game is going to be a long one, quite a fun one as well. We're going to be going into Amori with RJ's Mangit. Take it away. Thank you so much. Yeah, like you said, I'm RJ. Uh, I'm going to be running Amori for you. It's a indie RPG that was released on Christmas Day in December uh, last year, just last year. So pretty fresh. Uh, has some horror elements, has some cute elements, like Eck said. So hopefully we get to show this all off. Uh, I also have a... Fr uh, friend on the couch today, um, Punchy. Hi, How I'm you doing, Punchy. Punchy. I'm also here. I played this one too. <laughs> it's so good. It's good time. Anyway, we'll get it started because I have this thing with RPGs. Any good RPG speedrun has a cutscene immediately upon starting it. So we'll get going because there's about a minute and a half cutscene. Yeah. Uh, so game game starts on a new game, so I'll give you like a three count good. on go. So three, two, one, go. Like I said, every good RPG speedrun starts with a cutscene. The longer, the better. Because everybody likes sitting and doing nothing in their speedruns. Am I right? Exactly. Is Chad agreeing with me? Thereabouts. There's a delay. <laughs> there's, not, there's, there's not actually that many of these, but it does start with one. Yeah, and they're not too bad, because a good thing about this game is that it's an RPG maker game. So naturally, there's all sorts of little bugs and things with it. One of the bugs is that the the text can be sped up with really fast meshing. And uh, the community decided that Turbo was cool. So now we use Turbo to mash really fast for us, and it sped the game up quite a bit. Yeah, because alternately... What, what what people were doing, and at least what I was doing before we agreed on, like, Turbo, was that we would bind... I bound two buttons to shift and enter, and I would, like, like double-hand mash the keyboard. I don't want to do it right now, because knowing me, I'll, like, disconnect from the stream and, like, launch a nuclear missile or something. <laughs> like, it was, it was loud as hell, and uh, I had to stop doing it, because <laughs> it was annoying the neighbors. <laughs> and it was also borderline the worst. Yeah, it, like mash for three hours with a mechanical keyboard. It it sucked. Yeah, I hated it. Wait, how loud your so keyboard glad where your neighbors heard it? I mash really loud. <laughs> oh. You gotta you gotta put force into it. Yeah, you really gotta you really gotta go for it. It goes as fast as you can mash. There's no limit. Oops. Anyway, in the starting room, you have to examine uh, all the items, but if you examine them in a particular order, this order, something happens. And it always spawns in the same place, depending on what I think the last thing you looked at is. Yeah, I think, I think it's just it the last one. Yeah, so we do it in that order because looking at the, the cat last results in it spawning close to you. That's a good point. I wonder if it did the laptop last, if it would be closer to the door. I think we I went over that falls at some there. point. I feel like that's the sort of yeah, thing we did think about, but I've now forgotten what we thought about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do that a lot with this game. I'm like, oh yeah, I wonder if you just like take two steps this direction and then see if it is faster. So much of speedrun running remember is trying to remember why you don't do things. Yeah, it really is. There's a pretty recent strat for the first, I guess I'll call it a boss, like a sub boss that I had thought about like, I don't know, four months prior to us actually doing it. And I couldn't remember why I didn't like it, but it ended up still being faster and I was just totally wrong. 
but that's what it is, you know? Just grab an allowance from our stair snake real quick. Don't worry a thing about it. Yeah, fortunately, the game just, so like, gives you quantities of money at various points in the game, so, like, money routing is a thing you only kind of have to pay, like, half attention to. And luckily for us, it works out, like, kind of almost perfectly. We do go out of our way to pick some stuff up that we probably didn't... Well, we definitely didn't used to um, for different strats that we've made up along the way, but for the most part, the money we get is almost, like, exactly what we need. So it's pretty good. But the beginning of the game here isn't every runner's favorite, because we do start with a cutscene, but this part might as well be a cutscene. Because we uh, just get to sit here and watch text for about a minute. Kind of get introduced to characters and whatnot. It's set up. It is, it, it is. It's plot. So uh, while we're going through the plot here, I actually have a question, uh, really for both of you here. Um, with a game like Mori, given that it is a longer duration and, you know, the game goes for about three hours, how early do you end up resetting? And like, normally if you're like streaming this or doing attempts or something, how many resets would you be like allotted? Uh, RJ too much, me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll reset. There is a... Uh boss pretty early on that all that's a pretty heavy reset point because at this point uh with all of the glitches oh, i'm not even paying attention we don't want to look at the pictures they're nice but we don't want to look at them uh there's a boss pretty early on that is extremely toxic and at this point with all the other strats most of the bosses we don't really fight with uh conventional game methods i'll say we'll get we'll get to it later why we don't but it's, it ain't called glitch so, for nothing folks yeah it's 80 percent glitched and you'll You'll it, certainly see why. It, we're going somewhere with this, trust us. <laughs> yeah, We I, don't want to get I, too far ahead of ourselves. I will basically only reset if the first boss goes, like, completely sideways. Otherwise, I'd commit to finishing regardless. Because I can't reset a run, like, two hours in. I won't have time to start another one. I don't got all day. I'm a fan of pain, so I will He's reset a, of pain. a handful of times <laughs> before I call it quits. I'm, I'm the kind of person who barely ever runs games that are longer than like an hour for this reason. I rarely have time to get more runs of these longer games done. It's a shame, because I kind of like them. I think I only run... No, I run two games that are shorter than this, but everything else is much longer. I, RPG, RPG runners are terrifying. <laughs> Can't handle it at all. There's just something cozy about it. There's a lot of like, they usually could be pretty technical and like nice clean menuing, which is always nice to see. And then there's just something cozy about sitting in the same chair for six hours, hoping you don't die. <laughs> Meditation. <laughs> so this is like one of the rare, uh, we didn't get them, but one of the rare not rare, I don't know what I'm trying to say. This is one of the sequences where we actually have to do something, and it's a play hide-and-seek with all of the people in this park. So there's like a nice little route if you run in kind of like a square from the left to the bottom to the right, where you can grab everybody in one swoop. But you have to grab, there's a certain number of people out here right now, and you have to grab all of them before the last person will spawn. And uh, conveniently, after we talk to this last group here, the personal spawn right next to the tether pole here, or tether ball pole. And we're perfectly lined up, so real cool. And after we're done, they kind of do a roll call to make sure we actually found everybody. And there's some people with attitude, like you can see Kel, one of the one of our party members, laying down up there. Barely doesn't like it. <laughs> Gives him a good double smack. But then they do realize that somebody actually is missing, and one of the characters from the blanket conversation we're having, Basil, is still not found. So we're everybody recalls Basil being up by this tree.
Oh no! <laughs> He's been held captive. This is uh, apparently the park bully whose name is ironically Boss. And he's actually gonna be the first person we fight. Combat, it's true. So this fight we really literally don't have to do anything but attack. Uh, we're just hoping that Boss doesn't do anything. Or yeah, if he does it, something, it's the lesser of two evils. Like the double punch is the slowest thing he could do, so kudos to him. Whoa, look at that. So there's a bunch of like RNG cycles for this fight that could say, oh, we actually got it, wow. Um, where you can either win the fight in two full turns or two turns with one extra attack from Amori. Saves about five seconds, so good RNG so far. Yeah, a lucky crit will let you get this slightly faster. It's not super important, but it is a thing. Oh, no. It's totally not worth resetting for because it almost never happens. Because that fight always turns three of your party members to toast, only Omori gets the experience from it, which means there is no way to have your experience be equal across the whole game. I know, that's a... Completely impossible. It really m messed with my brain. I was like, I just want them to all be the same. Nope, can't <laughs> be done. Literally cannot be done. It ruins it immediately. Because Omori is of the, like, the, the special party member variety where if he dies, the game is over, so he always gets experience from every fight. Which is a terrible mechanic. So the game ruins the ratio out of the gate. But yeah, so that fight was really just a tutorial to explain that Amori gets one get-out-of-jail-free card with taking mortal damage. And that can be abused. And ideally, it shouldn't be, but you can. There is a bug related to it. That will come up sometime later. The mailboxes in this game, like that guy, function kind of as like a, a merchant of some sorts. But if you were to just run past them, you get a cutscene that's slightly longer than just talking to it. Whereas if you talk to it, you don't get that cutscene. So that's why we'll we'll talk to it. And we actually used to buy stuff there, uh, but we don't anymore because we kind of need the fifty bucks that we would have spent. All right, so now we're being now introduced we're gonna... to like the principal mechanic of Omori's combat, which is the emotion system. Hey, nice. So that's again, these angry. fights... Yeah, that's the angry mole. They take more damage when they're angry, but they also do more damage. That's basically how that works. Pretty simple. And again, we're not really doing anything in these fights. We're just attacking, hoping for good RNG with damage rolls and uh, what the enemies do. Although this one always seems to do attack Kel and hit him for a crit on the second attack. I don't know why this one's scripted, but like none of the other ones are. Hey, nice crit. Yeah, Happy is slightly more complicated because it makes them faster and makes them crit more, but I also think it makes them miss more. I think that's the yes. breakdown. Yes. But Happy has a variety of effects. The fast, the fact it makes enemies faster and you faster is very, very important because turn order is king in games of this nature. Yeah, see, speed is always seems to be like the the best thing in RPG speedruns. But we actually have to do something in this fight, so I didn't pay attention. And this dude's sad. We almost never want things to be sad, because sad enemies take less damage by way of offloading some of their damage to their juice, which is their MP. It's an MP thing. And this is not Star Ocean, so you cannot do MP death to things. <laughs> it really does take quite a bit longer to just mash it out sad. Way more. It's way more efficient to just make stuff angry. And that was actually the before we were doing all sorts of glitches and overpowered stuff, making things angry was pretty much the the route we was, took with every boss. Yeah, it was the way to be because they take more damage and what have you. So the strategy was just to make everyone mad and have them die mad about oh, it. Nice. And that was picnic. I've been fit. Yeah, it kind of comes and goes. I've been failing it a lot, so I didn't even want to talk about it in case it didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, a, a whole cutscene was skipped there by using the picnic basket before... I don't really know why it works, frankly. I just know if you do things in a particular order, you skip a cutscene, question mark. Yeah, it was one of the first things that somebody found out for basically no reason. But it is pretty nice. It's like a 15-second cutscene. Okay. And this is a, a scripted thing, so everyone just guards for a moment until the game deigns to explain the final combat mechanic that we're going to be using. 
And a funny little byproduct of the glitch is that we get extra kids for some reason in this little tiny scene. They go away almost immediately, but it is pretty funny. Really? Whoa. Well, hero cooked. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, so we're having everyone guard here because now we have the energy meter at the bottom of the screen. When someone gets hit, oh! it goes up by one. Uh, when they miss, it does not go up by one. So it missing twice there is quite bad. Oh. The double miss stinks. I'm actually having a slightly issue hearing the hearing everybody in Discord. But that double miss that happened turn one is actually really terrible because we have to do an entire other turn of this. Yeah, ideally it would already be at 10 energy, and 10 energy is enough to do special attack. Now it's 10. It's really unfortunate that the double miss happened because all we really want is the big sprout mold to hit us to 10 energy so we could do this full release move. And uh, two misses is enough to not get it after the second turn, which take, it loses you like probably about 30 seconds, 20, 20 to 30 seconds. Energy release does a fixed amount of damage regardless of the enemy statistics or characteristics or anything of that sort. So it's useful for the run because it will always do X hundred amount of damage. It depends on the point in the game you're at. It increases at the start. It's like 300, then it's like 600. And then it, I don't know. I don't remember the number. It's good. It's good for this kind of speedrun because it doesn't depend on level or attack or anything. It just always does big damage. But unfortunately, it's principally built by getting hit, which kind of works against it when you don't have many in the, much in the way of levels to work with. Because this run is basically a boss rush. I think we fight... We, we actually, actually we skip a boss now as well, so we fight less than the number of mandatory encounters. We are chronically underleveled for pretty much the whole game. But it works out. The things that scale, that don't scale off stats and just sort of are flat damage work the best in this context. 10 energy or 10 energy. We get to help Basil put his photos back. Nice, Basil picture in the first spot. Yeah, the positions are always the same, but the order the photos are in in the menu is randomized. Yeah, well, it's super weird, w weird thing to be randomized. Oh, I can hear you again, by the way. I was like, oh, I heard that so clearly. <laughs> oh, I've been talking then, like this whole time. I know, I can hear you. Uh, you oh, guys no. are like robot voicing a little bit, and I don't know if it's just a bad Discord connection or what, but. Oh dear, well. I, I can hear you, I was hearing you go at it, so I was just letting it happen. I see. <laughs> I was telling the, the audience about how release energy does fixed damage, and therefore is useful. Yes. Since we have no levels to work with. Oh, yeah, before the glitches, the release energy was essentially what got us through every fight. Everything we did in the fight was kind of just, like, living for release energy. And then the Sprout Mole had to go and miss twice, which added an entire extra two turns. <laughs> that's something that's super rare, that Sprout Mole almost never misses twice. But it's happened to me, at this point, three times in the last six attempts, so that's not a good number. But the run can still continue, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing about the run, too, is if we happen to get defeated in battle, because some things, some things can just go horrendously wrong, we just get to restart the battle over again. I guess that's a good thing, think, like, this, is that it's, it's, hard, it's hard to, like, brick this run to the point where it's impossible to finish. There's a lot of RPGs yeah. if you die, it kicks you to title screen. This game does not. So now we kind of realize that that entire sequence we were doing was like a dream for this 
main character, whose name is Sunny. If there wasn't a delay on the hotfix chat, I would have had them name it. Alas, that would take too long. It would definitely take too long. Yeah, I kind of didn't think about that. I was trying to not turbo a thousand letters at the end of it, even though you can only add one extra letter, but... He always ends up being Sun E with a little E at the end of it. <laughs> I do it for some reason. I don't know why. I have this, like, muscle memory movement, apparently, to a lowercase E, and it always ends up on that one. You can only add one letter. You can make it Sunny D. Uh, missed opportunity. I've actually never had a Sunny D, so I feel like my childhood might be invalid by saying that. They're horrible. Yeah, isn't it? Like That's what I've heard. They are pure sugar, juice. but orange. So the stairs we just refused to go down look a little bit different now, and there's a nice, like, reddish hue out the window. Nothing like a good old fire weather outside, but... Yeah, this is the horror part. It's happening now. <laughs> It was cute, now it's aggressively horror. We have now justified why we're on this show. <laughs> I think these sections have, like, just really great sound design. Hey, look, there's knives on the re there's a knife on the really long stairs. One of these segments has a sound effect that samples a Japanese TV show. <laughs> yes, I remember you posting about that. <laughs> I don't know where it's from. Like, it's, it's either from a Japanese TV show or some weird, like, sound effect <laughs> library. So the real hand comes to get us, and then you know it's on, which actually puts us into a battle with what's called a stranger. And there's a couple different strangers, or a something, I'm sorry, a something. And this something happens to be our stairs. So right now we're fighting the stairs. Something in the dark. Look at that smile. It's made of teeth. <laughs> so really this fight's pretty um scripted or it's not really scripted but we're just kind of waiting until we get a real life skill which is uh taking a deep breath and calming down yeah, this is this is the fear of falling and uh fun fact that almost no one encounters a normal play if you just sit here and do nothing for 10 turns it does just kill you really I've it, never is, done it that. is perfectly possible to die during this fight <laughs> It will, it will display in the text box, you hit the ground, and the game ends. Wow. I did not know that. You gotta hang around for a really long time to have it. Like, it's it's ten turn cycles, I think. Oh, there's a lot, too. And, like, back when the game was released, there wasn't the even, like, a normal fast text. It was pretty, actually, excruciatingly slow. And uh, so to screw up that many times and not realize what you were doing would have taken even longer than it would in this setting. Delicious microwave actually, steak. Yeah, you know, you just microwave your leftovers and eat it in the dark. Been there. Can you microwave steak? Is that allowed? It, it's not going to be great, but if it's already cooked, it's not going to kill you. I'm not personally a fan. <laughs> Neither is Amori, apparently, either, though, because we just threw it up. We threw up. And thus, bed. What well, glitches have been showcased? Someone in chat asks. So far, a couple of very minor cutscene-type things, but we're... we're we're getting there. The mechanics take a... They start to open up. Roughly now, actually. As we get into yeah. the headspace for a second time. Probably about, like, another... I don't want to say 10-ish minutes, but somewhere around there, we'll be doing some glitches. Hopefully doing them well. <laughs> we did do... We did actually incidentally see the uh, fast text glitch which comes up very rarely even now oh yeah i forgot about that hey, i forget that's a glitch because it's like really hard to avoid <laughs> yeah like anytime you kill something in this game with one of the follow-up moves which release energy is one of the follow-up moves it uh 
the the dev put in a mechanic where the follow-up text was sped up because it was really slow for whatever reason uh but there's like this bug where the speed up of that text carries through to the victory screen so the text flies by really fast and it seems like it might not be that big of a deal but in some of the fights where you actually gain a couple levels and a few skills at the same time it saves like a small handful of seconds which could add up enough that it's worth trying to win with a follow-up attack if you can yeah for sure if you don't have to if you don't have to drag the fight out to do it it can very often be worth it money back for our papa snares uh stair snake giving us more money we get introduced to another mechanic plot point of the game is collecting these uh, keyboard keys. Yeah, this is actually sort of the broad goal of the entire game, is to complete the keys. So we'll be collecting a lot of them. Twelve of them, to be exact. Most of them are on the critical yeah. path, but not all of them are. Wait, I guess they're all the critical path, technically, since you can't beat the game without them, but what I mean is that you have to go out of your way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most of them are, like, only a few seconds out of the way, even if that. And there's one that's about 50 seconds out of the way, but it's the very last one we get. Yeah, the one that functionally requires backtracking is not coincidentally the one we do last. <laughs> so now, uh, when we came back, we were missing a friend. We were missing Basil. Uh, everybody was kind of discussing where to go, and Mary... Uh, the character who's not in our party, but we'll talk to a lot throughout this game, told us that we should go. Oh, there she, there she is again. Mary likes to keep coming up in all sorts of places, but she Who's told us prepared? we should go to Basil's house to look for him. Pretty strange how Mary's the only person who will always show up all the time. That That's the sound effect from a Japanese TV show. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. And, and it goes into this wacky video, too. I <laughs> just... I want to point that out just to ruin it for everyone. <laughs> if I if I have to if I have to have this knowledge, I have to curse everyone else with it too. Yeah, if we had to watch it, so do you. So Basil's not there. Now we're gonna run back, and Aubrey actually suggests that we search the forest. That's a little ways back. So I get to run all the way back, but not quite all the way. We'll stop before the playground. And uh, make a lift. This four series is actually pretty funny. Uh, the way it works to advance the story, we have to go through three different screen different screen transitions. And the fastest way, it, it actually goes in a loop too. So, like, if you run all the way left, you'll actually end up on the right side of the screen we just transitioned from. And uh, we actually found out that if you start the cutscene on this screen and then run back to the right to get the, the key that's in here that we'll be getting. It's actually faster than just running straight through. By like a couple of seconds or something. Yeah, it was two seconds when I timed it out. Because for some reason, this cutscene is a half second faster on this side of the forest than the other. I, I, I'm impressed that like the trouble was even gone to to time this. Sometimes I get pretty bored, I don't know. I've, I've played like much more complicated games with less sure ideas of what people are doing. <laughs> <laughs> jacks, jonks, yes. Yeah, we get some jonks, some jacks. Important, important item. Oh, so I, I mentioned that going the other way is actually faster, but we need to pick up some items that are in the forest now. So we go the, we go the long way and lose two seconds. And we used to buy jacks, but we need that... Uh, they're 25 each. We used to buy two of them. We need the 50 bucks now. Post B in chat. B. Two keys down. We're doing great. This mole is the worst. Face you are scum. He's evading all of the enemy encounters that he can here because they're just not worth doing. Case in point, here's a bunny. Oh, he, he got me. We're going all the way up. I'm not risking it. 
I almost ran into it anyway. Fights are really slow. Just getting into a fight and escaping first try is probably like, I don't know, five, five-ish seconds. So getting into a lot of fights and yeah. then subsequently failing to run ends up being quite a problem. I forget what run chance is dictated by, but I do know that it increases the more you do it, so eventually you will always be able to run away. It feels speed-based, but I don't know. That would make sense. I've, I've never looked at the formula. Someone has it. Lamia probably has it. Lamia! Yeah, for sure. We know you're there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she was one of our main uh, game code breakers. Maybe the GDQ chatbot got angry because I told everyone to post B. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it. We're, we gotta do it for every letter. But That's we dealt with fun. our fear of heights in the real world, so it lets us get over our high fear of heights in... Uh, Headspace. This whole, whole overarching area is called Headspace. Need to climb a really long ladder. Hell has lost his pet rock, Hector. This is the last we will see of Hector for the duration of the run. We are not finding Hector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you get to see him throw it, and then all of a sudden you, you lose him, like, <laughs> like five minutes later. Hector lands in an area we have absolutely no reason to go to in this run. So are we going from B to F now? What is the next key? E, it's I E, think. isn't it? I believe so. E. But coincidentally enough, F is not one of the letters we need, but it's the only key that the game makes you pick up that you don't need. You cannot get around it. Oh yeah, it is. It forces you. So we'll have some Fs and chats eventually. <laughs> we'll have the meme, guys. Just just wait. <laughs> We're getting close to the glitches, I promise. This run Although has the a fight wind glitches. up time, but once it starts, it gets quite good. Yeah, it, it does go from like 0 to 100 in, in a matter of getting to points. We need to get to in the next like dungeon, which is kind of like the game's real first dungeon. Um, we get like a party ability of being able to tag between the members, and that's going to be important for doing one of the, the most recent glitch that was discovered. It'll be uh, big for doing it. We need it. So recently that it must have, like, this was found, the glitch got found after this was, like, taken in for the hotfix, wasn't it? Must have, because it, yes. like, it was, like, a week ago. Yes, it was. I actually, I think, said, this this yeah, tech is, that we're going to do is so, This tech is so fresh that, like... There's only one PB on the board current. Well, I don't think that's true. I think there's two PBs on the board that use the new tech. I have it. I've yet to finish a run with it just because of other nonsense in the game. But so if I can't, if I actually have a good time doing the glitches, this could end up being a PB for me. Fingers crossed <laughs> that we don't die to all of the bosses a million times. Well, this is a funny cutscene. Um, the guy in the bed there, Captain Space Boy. Or Space Boyfriend. He's Captain Space Boy IRL. But uh, he's uh, not feeling himself, so this uh, Space Pirate guy tasks us with the job of finding his special mixtape to try and cheer him up. He got dumped. Runs right past the Earth. There's a mini boss in this room. It's just the Earth. <laughs> We're not going to fight it. If you select it, though, it says the Earth looks peaceful. Do you want to disturb it? Yes, no. If you select yes, <laughs> the entire Earth attacks you. <laughs> the whole Earth. It's one unit. 
is it strong? At this point, kinda, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of scary for being at this level. But you can do it after this section. Yeah, you can come back whenever, and, uh, I think. Almost whenever. It does go away yeah, at some point. I, yeah, and then it turns into, like, uh, another character who's who we'll meet soon and to the Earth together. So this is the junkyard. We'll be running through here, picking up various items. Oh, we have to go back. I forgot something. Uh, also, the items are in melons in this game. I think it's a boob joke, because, you know, chests. <laughs> I think. It may just be funny fruit, but I think it's a boob joke. So I forgot to do some shopping here. Oh, did I? Oh, I forgot a lot of stuff. All right, we're going to have to YOLO and do an old strat for download window. My B. I was supposed to pick up a dandelion in the forest that I didn't pick up to sell for uh, rubber bands. But that's okay. We'll just do it the old way. No big deal. I do this a lot in my own runs where I forget. This is one of the newer boss strats where we decide to use rubber bands, an item, a usable item in battle that does a set amount of damage. And it does way more damage than any of the characters can do by themselves right now. But there is a way we used to do it that won't be a problem. And now, the mechanic. Tagging the main party member out. Every character has a different ability when, when they're in the lead. This is mainly used for sort of light puzzle solving, but it is the crux of the newest glitch, and also probably the most used glitch in the run. Let me start using it now, yes. This, what, what, have we, what do we call this? Have we even agreed on a name yet? I call it tag stepping. Good enough, let's go with that. This is tag stepping. If you open the tag menu and attempt to walk at the same time with a sort of piano type input, it's basically at the same time. Uh, you can move forward and not have scripts that would normally trigger by going over a space. So that was actually really bad, but once you're committed, you kind of have to keep going with it. Oops. Turbo. Yeah, Oops. so that conveyor belt would have normally pushed us back out, but because of tag stepping, you can just kind of walk over it without having to fiddle with the conveyor thingy. And same on the way back. Tag who? Tag who? Uh Tag At who? this point, it would have been faster to just hit the... Yeah, it's Tag Who Glitch. Actually, we kind of need this. Oh, yeah, Comet Hammer's up there. Ah! The long way <laughs> out. Yeah, if you miss it, uh, <laughs> whatever normally would happen if you walked over a space. The conveyor wow. belt of shame. <laughs> so we're getting... I mean, we're going the right way, just not at, not at the desired pace. I for, so normally, if you're doing the right strat, you don't even need to go in there. But we need the we need the weapon in there just for a little bit of increased damage for our character Aubrey here. Why? Yeah. Got right. That was unfortunate. There. Hey, Kel found hey, a can of a... cherry soda. Oh shoot! <laughs> wow! What? <laughs> Get me out of here! <laughs> All right, we have to kind of wait until it goes away. Because it's blocking our path. <laughs> it's in the way as well. Is it? What is this? What is this kind of a sequence? Uh, oh my goodness. Don't hit him. Okay, no, they let me go. didn't even find anything. So this, this whole area actually has a special mechanic where Kel randomly digs through the trash at the start of every fight and finds stuff. Trying to just tag a Mori. There we go. The well, more special ability is that he has a knife. He cuts things. <laughs> Mostly traffic cones. We get to learn about Kel's ability here, which I find the most strange. In context. So you're like, he, he throws, his, his weapon is to throw, and he throws it from platforms at things, but I don't know why he can't just stand right in front of it and throw it at it. Yeah, Kells is the oh, most, like, very, very specifically solves one particular kind of obstacle type ability. I'm already just cuts <laughs> things. Rubber bands. Rubber bands deal fixed damage when used, 
Hence my whole spiel about how things that do fixed damage are very useful to us because we don't have a whole lot of attack stat to play with. Rubber bands. Healing items. Donuts, jacks. <laughs> we need the healing items because we will be taking damage, although how much we need is highly variable. So you can take more or less depending on how brave you feel like being. I'm actually... So we picked up a, an item, it's called Butt Peach Soda. It sells for a lot of money. I don't think we actually needed it at this point because I didn't do the first strat. So we don't need the extra money that I'm going to get from it, but that's okay. I can sell that instead of one of the life jams and keep safety. Oh yeah, we also we skipped the tutorial that explained that, so I'm going to. Life jam is revive. It revives someone if they are toast. You spread life jam on the toast and then they come back to life. But we skipped the tutorial. That's not like a bug, you can just sort of walk around it. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually in the conveyor belt section that we went through. Yeah, we just, we bypassed that completely. So these cuts, if I don't make like a particularly disgusted face or reaction, the cutscene can't be skipped with the tag glitch. Trust me, you'll know if I blow it. <laughs> yeah, but so this is also one of the cutscenes you can't skip. Really, this one? Mm -hmm. What happens if you try? Uh, it just triggers. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right then. If you, if Omori says so. Yeah, you just you do the movement, but it still just triggers the cutscene, which I think you would have to anyway, because there's stuff you can skip that uh makes you go back and do it anyway. Yeah, like breaks the game. Yeah. Not everything is so permissive of skips. So we'll equip the weapon we got for Aubrey and give her a tag. And then we're going to go heal at the... Although Omori is the only one who took damage, so we probably don't need to heal, but we'll do it just because I don't want anything to go wrong. Anything else, at least, at this point. And then you can't skip... E well, you can't skip this cutscene, but you can actually skip this boss fight, but it's a trigger. So we do it anyway. Yeah, you need to fight this one. So I actually have to be careful here and do the this stuff correctly. Because this is the old strat. Download window. Yeah. Alright, so Kel uses Elhorn, which makes the entire party feel angry, which increases their damage. All right, now we can just hold turbo. Right, so the gimmick with this fight is that download window will do something after X many turns, and that thing is ruin your life. But in a very particular way. But as long as everyone is angry, you'll be able to get the kill before that becomes a problem. It'll seem you know, very scary, but it's calculated. One of the benefits of this not going as fast as it could is we get to hear how much of a banger this song has no business being. Yeah. So that attack looks very scary, and it kind of is, but it also it always does 80% of your max HP, I think, so it will, it will never kill from this position. And uh, your base hit rate in this game is at 100, as in you can't miss unless you're happy or otherwise affected by like some kind of accuracy down thing. So there's no chance for this strat to backfire based on like a random miss. That kind of that cannot happen. In theory, I guess if you low rolled a ton, it would suck, but I I I don't think that can happen. I think if he, the only way you could really start missing is just not having a weapon. But even still, I think if you like, there's items that increase your hit chance. So like, if you don't have a weapon, but you have like one of the items is binoculars, okay, you, you can, can get, you can, a, you can actually still hit. You can unequip your <laughs> weapon and then like have no hit rate if, for some reason if you want to do that. Although I don't think Amori can unequip his knife. I, I believe this to be a fundamental thing when assessing an RPG speedrun. Is does is there like an inherent failure rate in the basic act of attacking something? 
Omori right, so is generally not one skip. of those games. All right. Yeah, okay, try and skip a big cutscene here. Hold on. I know. <laughs> we didn't skip it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this entire cutscene would be skippable. The tag step. This is the is the biggest cutscene you can skip, which is super unfortunate for us. On the plus side, you can use the faster route out of Humphrey. True. So it really so it's. The, the cutscene's about two and a half minutes in total. Uh, and because this it gives us access to fast travel, which if you skipped it, you wouldn't have access to, uh, you lose about 30-ish to 50 seconds later in the run. So we're losing about a minute and a half because of this. Yeah. That's all right. What's interesting about this, like this is the cutscene where you unlock fast travel, but if you skip the cutscene, it never unlocks, ever. It's locked the whole game. <laughs> Yeah. It never becomes, like, the game doesn't catch up at some point and realize, oh, you should have fast travel. But no, it's just gone. You just lose access to fast travel permanently. Fun. But uh, that works out faster because we don't really use fast travel very much. You would use it yeah, once use it at the, the one end. time. <laughs> uh, and the skip is worth more than the fast travel would save. For sure. Way more. I'm very sad. I'm going to be much more careful going forward. For some reason, I don't like doing the skip going down. It's just something I gotta practice. It's one. Of the, it's one of the directions. I don't know. Bugs me or something. Yeah, this very tech, bad at it. Like I like like we said, this tech is brand new. Like about a week and a half old, and the timing is well not crazy. It is quite like it is a timing. It's punishing if you miss. Yeah. So we would still be skipping all of this. And the funny part is, is like you fast travel from where we were to right here. It's literally the next screen to the right. So <laughs> it makes you fast travel here, but you could just walk it and it takes about like 20 seconds. Yeah, also, I guess if you skipped this. Hmm. If you skip this, you wouldn't learn flex, would you? Nope. Huh. That doesn't matter for this category, but that hmm, hmm. Uh, might have it. That has implications on other categories, maybe. I haven't thought that through entirely. Oh my gosh! Fall <laughs> <laughs> well off, Wee. Sorry. You can laugh. I am a mess. Uh, that should actually be enough. Almond? We're buying this as a backup. Sparkler. And 16 rubber bands. Hopefully we don't need that sparkler, but it could be a good backup in this fight. If it so happens to roll that way for us. Hopefully it doesn't. Sparkler is an item that inflicts the happy emotion on either... It's just it's supposed to be just on the party, I think. Yes, one, well? one party member. I forget, I forget how the items in this game even work now because of all the glitches. Right, now we're using our beloved Jonks. Jax is an item that deals 25 damage always and decreases the enemy's speed. This is very important because it stacks, and it stacks in sort of a non-linear way, like the second use is more efficient than the, the first. The second stage debuff is a greater speed decrease. The third stage is even greater than that, but it only goes to three stages. There's no, like, debuff indicator, unfortunately. We also made a... Uh, Hell happy with Aubrey's pep talk, which increases his speed, which we're now going to do to Omori. Thus, we have manipulated the turn order to our advantage. Our general goal here is to stay alive by using healing items while fencing as many rubber bands as possible to deal fixed damage to Space Ex Boyfriend's face. As rubber bands will do 50 damage each time and also lower defense, but that kind of barely matters because 50 damage is still 50 damage. And at one point, it stops lowering defense, so it's just a really quick animation. Yeah, Aubrey was made sad, and angry counters sad, as in angry will do bonus damage to sad characters like that. Aubrey only barely survived that. Yeah, luckily, she's the beefiest character we have right now, so she can take it. Yeah, Aubrey is like uh, your sort of like berserker tank type character in this game. She's beefy and hits hard. That's her rolling. Hey, that's Ooh. a good move. It hits the entire party, which seems scary, but it builds lots of energy. 
right now we have 10 energy. There is a specific timing that this is ideally used. Hell is our fastest party member, especially with him being happy, so he will get to go first. Hence, he uses Popcorn to heal the entire party before Space Boyfriend can attack. Thus saving Hero's life. Just like that. And now he becomes enraged. Stage 2 angry emotion. He does even more damage. It's a problem. This starts reaching the point where if, uh, if he's lucky enough to crit, he will kind of just kill you. Yeah. But happy counters angry, in the sense that angry characters deal less damage to happy characters, so they are more survivable, albeit Kel still has the constitution of a wafer biscuit. We're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. You want to time this precisely because he will go to stage three emotion. Unlucky. Yeah, that happens. He will go to stage three emotion when his health gets low enough, and you really don't want to spend much time in stage three emotion because he does like eight bazillion damage. But you can't do release energy with a dead party member. I does that work? Yeah, we'll be all right. Oh yeah, Kel revives first. Then Omori acts, and release energy is used. That's we'll good. still need Aubrey's rubber band. Because uh, because Hero died, he didn't get his rubber band off, but oh, right. we should be fine. Are you sure you have one um, have one extra? Let's see. A release energy also does bonus damage because happy counters angry. No, you got it. Oh. You got it because of the extra attack. Right, you're right. That's what I was thinking. So that did 450 damage. Hard there. It was like a 41 crit. Just about Yeah, enough. that's pretty good. Yeah. And I accidentally attacked with Hero Turn 1 instead of uh, using a rubber band, so maybe that, like, minuscule amount of damage actually helped out. Yeah, because the, 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 the amount of damage we deal is all the rubber bands in our inventory, plus one attack, plus the release energy, plus an infinitesimal amount more, ever so slightly. It's, like, just about not there. <laughs> like, one extra attack <laughs> pushes it over the edge. Yeah. But if you find a place to squeeze it in, it can be... That's what you want. That's helpful. Which I was also a good point in showing, like, Hero's regular attack did six damage. That's why we use rubber bands, because yeah, it's it, a flat 50. It massively outdamages any sort of regular move we could do at this point, because everyone's level is really low, and Hero's attack stat is pitiful to begin with. Yeah, other than being just a straight-up tank and not concerned about his levels at all, he's pretty not helpful. Yeah, for Ketsub the speed run. As Ketsuban points out in chat, by the way, uh, only Omori needs to have emotion advantage for release energy to deal bonus damage. The state of the other party members does not matter. It only bases it off Omori. Yeah. Because even though it's like, it makes you think you're using all four party members, it's Omori's follow-up. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it only calculates off the, off the one party member. And that's important to note because the entire rest of the party member can be completely collapsing, but as long as they're not literally dead, it'll work. E. E. <laughs> All right, we're going to attempt to skip another cutscene. I am O for forever right now, so let's see if we can get one. I'm not keeping score. The lineup. Is this the lineup? Yep. Oh, good show. <laughs> I didn't do it. No. <laughs> I heard that. I thought I heard yup. <laughs> uh, I was like saying yep to the lineup. Like a uh, scream of pain. I thought it was one step further down than that. It is it's pretty a, funny, it's though. It's a so relatively like, short one. It's fine. Yeah, it's not so bad. It is pretty funny, though. Like, if you happen to skip the cutscene where Kel learns flex, um, and you hit that cutscene, too, he will still do, like, his flex animation. Like, look what I learned, even though he never actually learned it. Never, still won't actually learn flex. Also, our party members have abruptly vanished at this point. They are gone. And we're following this uh, shadow-looking character. Looks suspiciously like Basil. Eventually, we're going to get one of these glitches, I promise. Although, the really fun ones, the ones that are more obvious, are the battle ones. And they're almost impossible to not do. <laughs> Yeah, there's no way to, like, really... You can do them slowly, but you can't really fail at executing the battle glitches. A turn-based game. 
So here's our F key that it makes us get. This is the only one we don't need, but it makes us get it. F. So F's in chat for my effort with the glitches and F's for the key. <laughs> That guy comes to chase us. Usually, like, a game, like, makes you think, like, you want to run away or something. You ultimately can't, so we just turn around and run right into it. Not wasting any time. Time to wake up. And kind of get like a, I don't know, like a reminiscing dialogue of like a conversation between two people. Plot stuff. It's symbolic. I'm not going to explain what because it actually doesn't come up in this run. Yeah, it's, uh, this uh, this for a speed run that goes through an ending. This game has a lot of endings, and even doing this ending, you you won't really learn anything about the true nature of the story. Not even a little bit. Well, maybe just a tiny bit, but Somewhat. there's so much more to it than this ending will ever show. Because this is, in, this is in fact the branch point. This is moderate spoiler territory, but you're the ones who chose to watch a speedrun today, so I've decided to not care. <laughs> you don't come to a speedrun and then get to complain about spoilers, okay? Okay. But yes, this is the branch point. This game has two major routes, so to speak. And it's based on whether or not we open the door to Kel here in the real world. And the fastest route is to not. Yeah, we won't be doing it. It's kind of a bummer, especially if you played casually, <laughs> to just be like, nope, uh, we're not going to talk to you. But it is the fastest way, unfortunately. I don't know what people popularly call the route where we don't open the door. Like, informally, I think it's the Hikikomori route or something like that. Mm-hmm. I tend to just stick with bad endings. There's, there's, although... a, there's, like, a fandom nomenclature that I'm not aware of because I do not fandom. Oh, yeah, me neither. So I just go with the Hiko. <laughs> yeah, like, like, we're out here actually, like, playing the game. Yes, we stay indoors and instead decide to work on our chores. If we open the door, you'd go on a completely different path involving, like, you know, actually figuring out what's going on in the world and your life. Uh, but we're not going to do that because it turns out that living a full life uh, it takes more time. I don't... We don't have time for that. We are a shut-in. We're staying indoors and we're going to live in our own heads. I gotta it's, it's sweep thematic. these mysterious piles that came out of nowhere. It's, a, it's actually a pretty major, like, story branch point, and it's not really presented like it's a major story branch point. I think the game in the first section when we're, when he's going to reheat the steak and everything, they do something pretty clever with the door where you open it, and it's kind of like a spook. It gives you a spook, and it seems pretty inconsequential, so I think the game tries to trick you into thinking that if you open the door pretty much every time, that something bad's going to happen. At least in a little bit. Because it even presents... Like if you... Oops, we're looking at family photos. If you uh, go to the door in the first section of the nighttime, um, Mary's at the door. And it's uh, Mary's sprite from... I, actually, I think it might be her... I don't know if it's her sprite from Headspace, like in, in Sunny's head. Or if it's like a real-life sprite. But it doesn't it doesn't look like her. So when Kel's presented there as his headspace version, I think it's trying to, like, play with your thoughts a little bit. Doing the sweeping part gives you a lot of time to speculate. So I just kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent about what I think things might mean, even if it's completely wrong. Yeah, as, as banal as this might seem, it takes significantly less time than the variety and, and like, barrage of cutscenes you get if you actually went outside. 
it's a whole different path. It adds like several hours to the run. Mm -hmm. There is a category for it. Because there are some like, there's different content on yonder path. This is any percentage. Yeah, we finished our... The, the gameplay was so high octane that Sonny felt a little dizzy once he was done. I sympathize with that. I also need to lie down whenever I do moderate housework. I just bought a house recently, and I was doing some, like, floor cleaning, and when I was done, I definitely wanted to take a nap. So, I mean, Sonny's just kind of a mood. And now everything but, you is know, full that... of spiders. <laughs> yeah, we live in a spider house now. I have the exact same set of fears as this character. What? Yeah, kind of. Right, is this fear of falling, fear of fear of spiders, and boiler for the last one, put a pot on your head and bang it very loudly if you don't want to hear this. It's fear of drowning. The third one's fear of drowning. <laughs> I'm also scared of drowning because I can't swim. Skip. If you stand one space away, rather than running directly into the legs that pop out, you skip an animation where Sunny gets scared and jumps backwards. They gotta memorize where to stop. Not too much of an ask, there's only three and they're not random. But there you go. It's a nice little time save in a section where you're really, there's no RNG, just movement and stuff, so. It is a nice little time save to get. It's Mary. How did she get here? <laughs> we get to go into our next something battle. Which is really similar to the first something battle. Fear of spiders. I wonder how they created the sprite, because it looks like it's some kind of clay model almost. It does. It looks like, like um, almost like original South Park character design where they're like paper cutouts. Weird. It is very odd. It reminds me of, um, I also run a, a game called Hylix 2. Kind of reminds me of something that oh, yeah, should yeah, be in yeah. that. <laughs> it is a lot like that, isn't it? Yes, okay. So He's eventually, still focus. Focus just focus has a different function in real world battles because all these skills do actually have a function in real world battles, but against the somethings, they just kind of end the fight that they're a part of. Yeah, it's like a tutorial to teach Sunny that he's capable of doing it. There's a voice in his head, an, und an undescribed voice in his head, telling him that he has these abilities. And that he's capable. Because yeah, at the outset of these, uh, you can't use skills, because at the outset of the something fights, you're afflicted with the afraid emotion, which prevents you from using skills, but you have calm down, which is the one skill it does let you use. Calm down gets rid of afraid, and then you can use skills. But this is part of like how that whole emotion system works. But afraid comes up very rarely outside this context. It does come up, though. Not on this run, I think, ideally. No, we are really off track if we're doing that. But it is pretty, it is pretty cool. It is a mechanic. It in is the there. context. Yeah. One it adds another little flavor thing. to the fights. One extra string to the emotion system's bow doesn't happen to come up if you're doing this run correctly. There are exceedingly few things in the game that can even inflict it. It's like... Like five. It's like five things in the whole game that can do it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool, too. There's a lot of cool things to do in both routes, like in the, in the separation that Punchy was talking about. Both sections have probably equal amounts of content to experience. Which is something that's really cool about this game. It it seems like there's not a ton to it, but as you keep digging deeper and deeper and playing into the game, this is probably one of the this is one of the most 
are probably one of the largest indie games I've ever played as far as content's concerned. I definitely think it's like very dense with content. Mm -hmm. As far as RPGs go, I wouldn't say it's that long. I mean, for indie games it is. 20 hours is pretty long for indie games. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a 20 hour playthrough. But there's a lot in the 20 hours and a lot of it's mutually exclusive. You will, you will not see it all in one playthrough. You can't. It isn't possible to do so. 750 clams. That's a lot of clams. And then, unfortunately, that's the last time the snake will give us any money. But, you know, the snake gave us a thousand clams at this point. <laughs> Can you tag skip the snake giving you clams? I don't know. There would be no that's point to that, but I want to know if it's possible. I'd have actually never tried to tag in that room, but I don't know why you wouldn't be able to. I mean, it just depends if the game would let you skip it. I feel like the game would. See, I'm not even... I'm trying to think if you really need the money it gives <laughs> you. I've posited a stupid idea now, and I can you're, you're like, sincerely thinking about it. I can, hear, I, I can hear the gears turning in your head. Hey man, I literally ran back and forth in the forest section for two to find a two second time save. This sounds significant to me. <laughs> it's, there would be no good reason to do it. <laughs> you say that now. I really hope I'm wrong about that. I don't even say it seriously, and now I want myself to be wrong. I just I'm I'm trying to think like if you really need it. I hey, think wait, you do. Sprout moles. Yeah. Route more. Getting back on track to the speed run. Yeah, I could get real. I could go <laughs> off really heavy on tangents. <laughs> the fighting four, but we use the pasta hero action with Kel because Kel and Hero will dunk. And that deals all party damage. And if we have everyone attack different sprout moles, ideally oh, you could get right. all of this in one turn cycle, but it depends on whether or not you roll like sufficiently highly. Having two alive isn't great. I don't even know why I'm why I didn't just mash through that, but fine. What are these low damage rolls? Usually, with the past a hero and then an Aubrey and, or a, an Amori and Aubrey attack, will kill one of the Sprout Moles, but both of them under rolled on at least one of them. It happens. RPG runs. I don't know what the exact damage variance is. It's like I don't enough. either, and I used to know. Yeah, it's it's it can w w go pretty far in one direction. It's not necessarily that the hey. number variance is huge, so much as the um the values we're playing with are pretty small. It's so like a swing of five points of damage is like significant. It can make the difference between a kill and not. So we did do a small cutscene skip there. It's maybe a couple seconds at most. There's like a, before we oh, yeah. go and cut that spider web, Hero has a little bit of a, he's apprehensive about doing it. It's really after doing the skip, it's probably like a two or three second time save. But we're getting better. We did it. One for two. Put it on the board. Yeah, it keeps, we're keeping score now. <laughs> I didn't want to, but you started it, and now I remember it. I, I just, I like to be mean to myself, so... <laughs> Keep the stats for posterity. Ah, oh, I almost had it. So you can actually skip getting caught by the spiders there. I actually thought I would still get it. I've never been caught once I've been running to the left or right. The objective of this area is to collect the uh, the pieces of the track so we can insert it back in and ride a minecart all the way to the end. Is it still a minecart if it's not in a mine? The cart, then, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's just kind of like a cart. A railroad cart. Right, that's another all party healing item and quite a strong one. Yeah, right yeah. now it'll heal 60, but a hero will get a weapon at some point that increases uh, the amount of healing items do by, I think, 50%. You can't skip that spider. Grab a quick heal, because we took some damage. We are going to grab that, because it is still useful. Cat ears, it uh, increases the user's speed by 10. Uh. 
I'm doing kind of a setup for later. This is just how I like to do it. Girls are being removed right now. This seems inexplicable, but comes back around eventually. It helps kind of with the flow of how I like the a menu later to go. Ex well, we don't need this. And now, I, what? sir, sir, he's really into it. Huh? So, <laughs> it's like, I guess we're taking it because he hey, would not here, be was afraid of spiders. It came up. Oh, yeah, I forgot it actually does happen in here. Yeah, Hero is afraid of spiders, so he can't use skills at the outset of every battle. But we don't normally we don't fight anything in this area. That pot hated me, and that's you what I get for get going for the it. item I didn't need. I guess it is nice to have in case I don't get the skip, because the boss of this area is actually skippable with the glitch. I would save or with tag it. stepping. Yeah, you're probably right. So this is like a live run. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you don't get a take well, back. Can't we reset. still could actually just win the fight, but it could but be you... faster to save. Can you, though? Yeah, yeah, we're at, the, we're at the right level. You removed all your skills. Oh, you're right. <laughs> what would you do without me? Oh, man. I'm going to bully you into it. Save before doing it. Oh, we don't want to save, though, because I... All right, we can't because I can skip it. <laughs> oh, I didn't skip it anyway. What the heck was that one all about? It looked like I did the movement like... Whatever. We'll, we'll take the cutscene for the save. It's worth it. <laughs> Trying my hardest to get this guy to not, like, to ruin his own run. <laughs> <laughs> I like pain! You just I said have, it. <laughs> you just have to finish, dude. <laughs> All you gotta do. But I want it to look cool. Okay, good. Thank you. Because <laughs> yeah, this is this is attempting to skip a whole boss fight with tag stepping, and because RJ takes his skills off in advance of trying this, he got it immediately. In fact. Uh, because RJ takes his skills off in advance of doing this, if he messed it up and got into the fight, I'm pretty sure he'd be screwed. Yeah, survivability is pretty low. Because we take mock off of Amori, which is kind of like the the move we need. Yeah. Mock is a move that deals bonus damage to an angry foe, and it, like it's like a lot of bonus damage. It's a very strong ability. Well, you can skip this scene too, but we didn't! I don't know what's going on with me. You got, you got the good, like, you got the big one. Yeah, that one's the second most important one. Aside from the Pluto skip. I, the, the one he got looked like nothing, and I guess that's sort of the essence of the skip, is that when it's done well, it looks like nothing, but that skipped an entire boss fight. And against my, like, personal PB, it saves over two minutes. So it's a, it's a pretty significant fight to skip. Very RNG-dependent for it to be a good fight. Yeah, that's what I mean by we fight actually less than the number of minimum encounters now, because now we have found a way to skip an entire boss fight. This run is basically True. already a boss rush, and now we now it's boss rush minus one. <laughs> if the game didn't dislike it so much, you could skip download too, but you need the cassette that you get from it. So at least we got one of the big skips. There's two more like big skips, and then there's like a bunch of little skips that we'll be going for. So normally, since turbo is uh, allowed, I actually I have a rubber band on my controller here, so I wrap it around my turbo button. <laughs> hey, you roll this on pad. I do. It doesn't make any difference. I just forget. Like that's, I'm clarifying that for the audience. Like I forget that people play this on controller. I'm accustomed to keyboard bindings. Yeah, I'm just so bad with a keyboard. I even I even put myself through the pain of run, running Hilux 2 on a controller, and that was an absolute mess to get used to. Yeah, that game's controller support's really basic. <laughs> yeah, it's so much better now, but it used to not be pretty much be non-existent.
we would actively lose 30, 20, 30 seconds remapping the controls in the earlier stages of the run because they were just so bad. It, it, on the keyboard, enter, enter was accept. It was so weird. But that's a different game. <laughs> it's horror enough. Buggy guys is to accept it later. It could be conceived. Pretty much every time I ever play that game, somebody goes, this game scares me. And I'm like, it's just, it's not that bad. <laughs> but that's how you know it's a good game. Oh, got that. Just skip that little plug cutscene. That, that was another successful uh, the, the fun skip. thing about these cutscenes is if you're going to walk past the trigger again, you got to skip it again. Oh. Oh. Nice. Good job. We did it. We'll count that as two. We're getting all of the minuscule skips. <laughs> and then we didn't actually take any damage, so we don't have to heal either. We used to have to heal at some point here, probably from the last bas boss battle, but since we don't do it, we're already doing all right. This suspicious looking top hat sprout mole is gonna uh, ask Hero if he wants to be a fill-in for this dating show we've been watching. I don't know if we actually ever really talked about it, but this whole cutscene's like a dating show for this character called Sweetheart, who kind of all of the Sprout Moles love for whatever reason. Absolutely zero hijinks will happen now that Hero's involved. Snaily, our, un our unfortunate soul who got struck by lightning, they already have an in-memoriam for him. Great production team on these Sprout Moles. It's good tunes, though. We get to finally meet Sweetheart. She's really not annoying at all. This is, I think, this like the single longest unbroken cutscene in the whole game. Unfortunately for us, I think TDQ just ran an ad break, so no one's actually listening to this right now. I mean, some oh. people clearly are, but still. Ah. <laughs> That's okay. This is probably the best time for ads. I think they ended. This cutscene is torture. But it is pretty funny, though. Like, casually, these cutscenes are all really great, because uh, the one she doesn't like get thrown in the dungeon. <laughs> And it's just like a whole kind of funny setup with the cheery music and these people getting thrown in a dungeon. And then she's like, what's your decision? She actually really likes Hero. She's like, what's your decision, Hero? And then the, the guard moles creep out on stage. <laughs> I mentioned it as soon as the ad break finished, Dab. It was a good attempt. Oh. The delay makes it really hard to make, like, off-air jokes like that. Well, if you want to test the delay, <laughs> just have chat type in the letter, I don't know, J in chat. Do we get a J in this run? We don't. We don't get a J? Nope. No. Oh, yeah, BF. J is not part of the necessary letters. But then I'll, you'll Should know it's next... J. Because at some point I the next one we get is this, L. We get L? I like L. You, I think it is, the next it one's is, an it L. is imperative to hold the L in this run. We get a dub. <laughs> There's actually like a whole there skip a that was theorized that we cannot execute that would save like literally hours, but it doesn't work because we can't hold the L. That's true. Oh, the J's are There in. is a dub though. <laughs> the J's are coming in. <laughs> Thanks for all the J's. 
I told there you that tiny James mess was away. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Typing J, I suppose. I need to add into that. Oh, we have an L too. Nice. There we go. Nice. There we go. So with some good timing, there's a bunch of guards in this area on the upper floors. You can just kind of run past them. I'm no good at the timing for this. Oh, move. me neither. I got pretty lucky crisp. there. Ooh, this looks like a jump for Aubrey. Ah, we almost had it. I almost made magic happen. That one's the hardest one to skip, in my opinion. Yeah, I struggle. Me holding it. turbo. Oh, wrong way. Kel's very important skill coming in handy again. It's funny that Kel gets memed on pretty hard throughout this, pretty much everybody's run, but he's arguably the most important speedrun character in all of the runs. Yeah, it's it's his raw speed because like he gets to go first, but also he has so little health that he's both the most important character, but also the hugest liability. Because he dies if he gets breathed on. Funny, this is post patch as well. Like when this game first came out, he had worse HP growth. They they buffed the dude. Yeah, when have you ever heard an RPG character getting buffed? <laughs> <laughs> he he needed it against the. He league. really did. He needed it. It was not like a fighting gameplay. He needs it. But no, he actually did. His health was so low, it was like nearly impossible to fight some of the later super bosses with him because they do more damage than his max health could ever reach. So one for three on the guard skips there. Uh, that's not too bad. At least we got one of them. It is pretty hard. It just takes a little bit of timing. But sometimes even if you're slightly off. Hello. At one point, I'll let go of Turbo. Oh, I stopped. One too soon. You can skip this cutscene, but it's very short. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now we've escaped the dungeon. We get to actually be in Sweetheart's Castle, which is basically just a bunch of bunch of kind of fetch questy kind of things we got to do. We got to do four chores in the four corners of this room. But we're fastly approaching uh, one of the next. The next busted mechanic glitch that we use. Biggum, skippum, glitchum. This is my favorite. <laughs> is that the name of it? No. Yeah, it is now. Biggum, skippum, <laughs> glitchum. So right here, I'm about to do the biggum, skippum, glitchum. <laughs> Don't make this a thing. Oh, it's a thing. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and preemptively switch to Kel because of the, the next... The next part of the glitch needs him to be in front. Yeah, this this part of this glitch is like sensitive to the party member in the lead. For a particular reason. All right, I'm not going to make two cakes. I'm not going to make two cakes. I will let go of the turbo button. Two cakes, Johnny, coming up. <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> All right, we should be good. So the whole this this guy's trying to teach you how to make a cake, but he keeps telling you uh, the wrong name of the ingredients you're supposed to use, but they look aesthetically the same. So as long as you kind of pay attention to what he's saying, you can still grab the right things on the first try. But it is funny if you make the wrong ingredients, it actually makes a cake that kills them. <laughs> but it coconut. also wastes like a minute. <laughs> Just picking up that coconut causes Kel to learn the skill Juice Me, which is extremely important. It is key. It is the most key. We will explain what it actually does after the glitch. The glitch first, then explanation. You also collect the frying pan here. Coconut on Kel, because it's actually a pretty good weapon. Frying pan on Hero, which I think is the weapon that causes healing items to do more damage. And this is the glitch. This is skill swap. If you open the skill menu with a particular timing when changing between two characters, you can give skills to characters that aren't supposed to have them. 
I hide it for guy in the new route. Kel doesn't get the skills to get juice me off of him. Yes, so we're opening. We're essentially opening Kel's reserve skill menu nice. with Omori, so we can get Omori to have juice me attached to him, and that wouldn't be so good. We're also going to do it to Aubrey as well. You got that one first try. Yeah, that was good. Good work on Aubrey. You also gave her flex. <laughs> Yeah, does she have flex? Oh, uh, she doesn't have it. You, you, you replaced it with pep talk. And the, the skills, the skills the stay learned. Flex. Once the, once it's been swapped over to a character, it will stay there for the whole game. It's not like a temporary effect. It hangs around, and that's important because juice me is a skill that restores juice to a party member. That doesn't matter at the expense of twenty five percent of their current HP, and that is useful because of a second glitch, which I forget what we called it. Targeting glitch, I think. Target right? glitch. Yes. So if you t if you use an, a, a skill that can target both a party member and an enemy, and then select the enemy, back out, and choose a skill that normally can only target a party member, you can target an enemy with a skill that normally only works on a party member. That allows you to target an enemy with Juice Me, which restores some of their juice, but also takes off 25% of their health. That is massive, because it means you can do 25% of their health every single turn, and three party members have access to it. Hero can't use the targeting glitch because he's the last party member in the rotation, so there's no way to cancel his turn. Because you have to make a choice, cancel, select a different skill. So unfortunately, he made himself sad there, so we have to get rid of it, because it, it doesn't even affect this, this move. And then we're going to massage him so he doesn't hurt us. Who did he? Oh, he massaged himself. I'm smart. Yeah, using Juice Me, you can see in like two turn cycles, he's already down to like 25% of his health. It's 25% of current health, not maximum health. health. So it, it reaches a point of diminishing return where it can no longer do much damage, and that's the break point where you gotta go through it. Omori survives nice. because of Omori's plot armor. Getting hit twice in the same turn renders him immune to it. And then we're actually gonna encounter another glitch here because hero's gonna heal amori here oh well no, you just, we no, you just, you just okay. got the kill so never mind good fight. yeah we just win good fight <laughs> that was actually quite good yeah every anytime we get through these there's three of these sir max fights and if we can win with everybody alive that's like a in immediate benefit actually let's go here first yeah this is where the, the sort of the route gets kind of wobbly because survival is not guaranteed for the party and dead party members don't get experience and the experience matters because that can affect feet primarily for some reason, Pluto's here acting like a fountain, but he takes off. Yeah, that, that whole sequence, the skill swap into targeting glitch, that's that's the bigum skipum glitch. It's like a lot just happened at once there. <laughs> a lot just happened the at once there. It's just me the, that they only work together. There, there are many fun things you can do with skill swapping outside the context of this, but in this run, it's useful because of juice me, which is only useful because of targeting glitch. Yeah, we have a runner who does... um all bosses um, with the skill swapping and it does some, he does some pretty cool stuff swapping some skills around so they're just absolutely busted and hitting like the damage caps and all sorts of stuff yeah there's so a late it, is, game, it is pretty fun there's a late game skill that goes off the character's speed stat rather than their attack stat so you skill swap that onto Kel who has the best speed stat and he just runs a train on everything with it So for this sure, all we have to do is keep all of the sprout moles awake. And your idea, the idea is to have them like be awake so they can practice. But funnily enough, if you want to do it the best way possible, all you have to really do is wait until the song's over and hit all five of them, and then you'll get a perfect score even without doing it once beforehand. It's actually faster to do it kind of okay, where you don't want to you want to do it, but not all of them. This is another one of those minor things that I'm surprised that was ever taken the time to, to time. It definitely mattered a little more when this, the text was way slower. Uh, I guess that's true. Yeah, in the context of this run, it being slightly faster to do that to do that mini game okay, it really is slightly. I'm talking like a fraction of a second. And we also used to name Sunny just S because that actually did influence. Yeah, the one character name strat. Yeah, it did the actually classic. influence. The classic <laughs> of RPG, but now it doesn't matter. So this is a slight different way. I used to kind of just do it in a clockwise pattern, but uh, getting these heals is kind of nice for the fight since we still are kind of at a lower level. And yeah, the max fights still carry some risk. 
Although the mask, the max fights are the kind of fights where if you if the first one goes well, it becomes easier to keep doing well. Because you know level ups, which means you have more health, which means more margin for error. Albeit not a huge increase, but it's something. And even at the regular route, maybe not max one, but max two and three, they get stronger as we go. They're definitely scary, even with the right amount of levels. Particularly max three. That guy's think, a chump. I think they're the most dynamic fights in both routes, frankly, as in they're the, the fights where the most things can just sort of arbitrarily go wrong. You need to work on the fly. It is true. At least in no major glitches, there's a way to combat the uh, second and third max making themselves sad because we use hero to make them angry. And he'll, he'll always go after him. But, I mean, at any point in time, any of the maxes could kind of just tee off on Kel and kill him. And you really don't want to see that. Sir Max 3, on the other hand, could tee off on anyone and kill anyone. He's very scary. Mm -hmm. But now we get to fight Sir Max 2. For some reason, you get one in every corner except the second chore you decide to do. So these aren't all placed here. It's in whatever. So whatever one you do the third one, you'll get the second Sir Max fight in. The general game plan here is pretty much the same. Once again, you're going to use target glitch to get uh, Juice Me going. Immediately get like 60% of his health off within the first round. Except now Hero has Charm. Charm draws the enemy's attention. So it's Hero's job to take the damage away from everyone else because he's got the most health. And also it doesn't really matter if he lives or dies, frankly. Here's he's, one thing that matters. Quickly. Whoa, whoops. Once Maximus's health gets low enough, he'll also do his ultimate attack, and because of Juice Me strategy, that happens quite quickly. So we're actually, I'm gonna heal with Kel. I'm gonna play this as safe as possible and let him do some healing. Aubrey went first? Oh, yeah, Aubrey's, right. it's with the cat ears, it actually makes her faster than everybody for this fight. It's very funny. Okay, oh, well. sad. Wait, so he should attack. Oh, she can't actually do it anymore, so he has to do it. The skills right. that activate Restart. targeting glitch are the emotion-causing skills like sad poem and pep talk that normally cause happy and sad, inverse respectively, to either a party member or an enemy. Only skills that have sort of those dual properties work for this purpose. So after we do the sixth juice me attack, that's when they hit the threshold for their ultimate attack, which they get to do the spin attack and then attack a second time. Yeah. Unfortunately I mean, for Kel, he just got bodied, ow. but... Whoa, buddy! Double ow. And if that happens, your option is just basically to go for broke. Yeah, we're just going to hope we can bake it out of this. And dying isn't an unrecoverable situation, but if Omori dies, the game's over. All right. You, go. you got it. Yeah, I gave... So, Aubrey has the body pillow, which is a better weapon for her right now, and we did get at least some levels, so... Those two can usually pull it out after the ultimate phase. Kel is just unbelievably squishy. It's just a, a matter of fact. Kel so having him is survive is helpful, but unlikely. Yeah, it's not super likely, especially now. Yeah, because now that he has died, he is now down, I think, two level ups because of that. Because mm -hmm. you get two in one yeah. go. Yeah, I think they would have went to ten. It robs you of the precious health that you would have gotten otherwise, which means Kel is even more likely to bite it in the third fight. Okay, hack away. There's a weird glitch with Juice Me sometimes where if it, you do the skill swap glitch, it won't put any of the learned skills back on the people. Yeah, there's but, like a, uh, it creates like a sort of bugged space where there's no skill in it, but it counts as full. You have to mess around with the inventory to get rid of it. Yeah. And I think the way I ended up equipping their emotion skills back might have fixed it. I don't really entirely get how it works either, but I know what you mean. So last chore. This one's probably the longest one to do. You like colors, Maybe. chat? <laughs> Maybe even the most tedious. <laughs> But, you know, you get a room where uh, each of the other characters with their abilities become useful. Except Kel. Kel just, for some reason, is the one who... Well, I guess he is throwing the tomatoes. 
that's why. But it's not really like his typical skill where he gets on a random pad somewhere far away. You just have this to talk actually was to everyone that isn't pink. In yeah, this was actually made infinitely better by Turbo. <laughs> Essentially, we just create a huge conga line. I do enjoy how they all follow you. They will follow you in the specific order that they are selected as well. This, this, this impresses me because I'm vaguely familiar with RPG Maker and that sounds like a pain in the bum. Can't really select the wrong ones either. If you do, the game just the game yells at you. Last one. And we're gathering them all up so they can be thrown in the dungeon because they're not wearing pink. Right, one more Sir Max fight, the scariest one by far. Hopefully we can uh, get through it. The basic game plan doesn't really change for any of these fights, but more so the margin of error and likelihood of it going completely wrong. Omori does use RPG Maker, yes, but it's like heavily extended, like heavily. I'm just actually going to have him heal. Preemptive, full party heal. He's going to oh. hit somebody. Once again, everyone, else, well, he might not. Let's see. <laughs> oh, this is like the worst. <laughs> so he flexed and felt his best, which <laughs> makes him happy, which makes him faster, which throws everything into chaos. And also means the next attack he does is going to do however much extra damage that this does cause. It. It's a lot. It's significant. It's probably going to... It's probably going to kill something. Yeah, it's going to kill everybody, probably. I'm going to just preemptively heal Amori. Okay, buddy. Well, he made himself <laughs> sad, I guess. What? He's going to... I think all three of them have done it at this point. Hmm. Interesting, so... He's, he's still got... F that doesn't cancel the flex damage bonus, does it? It's still there. No, yeah, it has to be an attack. Okay, that makes this interesting. You don't want to trigger the ultimate attack while Flex is up because it will just murder everyone. Yeah, and I think it's unfortunately just uh, unavoidable. I'm gonna have to, yeah, what, what can you do? Because I'm going to have to make him angry at the same time, too. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, okay, we got the sad at least, so it won't maybe I, be as punishing. I don't murder everything. Oh, hero, geez. 135 did, damage, huh? How did hero take so much damage, but Kel didn't? Okay, whatever. That could have been a lot worse. It's still gonna probably be pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, sad enemies also deal slightly less damage, I think. But having the sad ult is a little, little easier to deal with. We could... Uh, it's, uh, we still have a little bit of damage left to do, and Kel's gonna be slower. Oh, he got to go first, wow. So he might kill... Wow. <laughs> Whatever, we're going for it. It's fine. You got it. Yeah, we lived. <laughs> oh, flex only affects one hit, apparently, even if multi-hit moves. So it's, well, I mean, it's arbitrary that who makes gets sense. The, the bonus damage then, since it'll pick a target. I didn't That's know even that, funnier. actually. Lesson learned. So we lived, and... Uh, Hero and Aubrey dying are less consequential than really anyone else dying. Yeah, it's not too big of a deal. Aubrey and Hero's levels don't hit. really matter from this point on, but Kells does because the speed influences things. Yeah, and you just you just want him to have at least some chance of living in Sweetheart. Once we get through this fight with Sweetheart, we're basically in the clear for the rest of the run. But this fight, it, getting past Sweetheart is a big ask sometimes. I think it's looking good so far. 
But yeah, I don't jinx it since Sweetheart is sort of the the gatekeeper of good runs. So we get to do a lot of step tag stepping here. Because we could tag, tag step this entire like laser puzzle of this garden. But we have to talk to the statue first because we have to get four passwords in the corners of the garden. And, um, oops. Well, now I gotta watch the little cutscene. That's okay. Yeah, there's a little scene. The statues shoot at you, you take some damage. And normally you're supposed to, like, get on top of platforms and have Kel throw balls at them to knock them down so that they don't shoot at you, but you can tag step past all of them. And he gets a new mechanic where he can aim his shots in three different directions, left, center, and, and right. Excuse me. Unfortunately, we get to skip it, so uh, we, we don't get to demonstrate the utterly bonkers cycle that the aiming works on. I've never figured out how that works. <laughs> It just, we do get to, well, we will get to see it in Humphrey later, but... It just, it just does whatever, man. It really does. It makes zero sense. Oh, this isn't fun. Made it work? And it's just a slightly awkward puzzle. More tag-stepping. This is one of the few tag-steps as well that's not, like, particularly punishing to fail. You fail it, you get knocked back one step. la di da try again. It does do damage to the party, mind you, but it can't kill, so who cares? Yeah, it's pretty inconsequential. And just so I don't over-turbo here, I just buffer a movement in the other direction. So we don't constantly talk to him. Hey, that was a good one. Wait, yeah, this way. This one this one trips me up sometimes to look at. I'm like, wait, which way do I actually have to go? Why couldn't the horse dude in the corner there having a great time? That horse is insane. It, it, it can end up in, like, any place if the pathfinding permits. Let me out. I did it for the heal. I don't want to be punished for it. <laughs> oh, gave him the slip. Free heal. Yeah, that little event acts as a heal, inexplicably. Not all of the events like that do, that one does. Sweet, jelly, filled, donut. That is the password. Unfortunately, even if you know it ahead of time, you can't just come here and do it. You have to get you have to talk to the statue first and then get all have the sprout moles in the corners tell you. I wish it weren't so, but it is. All right, here we go. Now it's time for the sweetheart boss fight. Probably the most volatile boss fight in the entire run, in my opinion. Space Boyfriend's pretty bad, but this one's, like, bad for so many reasons. Yeah, this is definitely the hardest one. Also has such a great song. So we open in a similar way. We're going to be using Juice Me to knock off, like, most of our HP bar out of the gate. But the reason why Sweetheart is so difficult to manage is because the bosses have sort of a theme with their emotions. Hers is happy. This is a problem because it makes her really, really fast. And very uh, crit happy. Very crit happy. So you're kind of at the mercy of what she chooses to do and if she gets lucky with it, then she's more likely to be lucky. Hence, Hero Fence is a rain cloud here to make the entire party feel sad so that if Sweetheart decides to smack everyone in the head, uh, they will take less damage. But Sweetheart also has a move where she laughs at everyone, and even if the laugh misses, it will still cause party members to turn angry. And Happy counters angry, which means if she then decides to take another turn and hit you in the head, which she can very easily, like that. Hey, oh, fun. Great uh, time. You, you'll take a lot of damage. It becomes a problem very quickly. Now she's manic. 
And it, when she's manic, she's like her speed is completely unbeatable. Uh, I just want to mention I love the music here. It's so good. This song like, is really so Euro good. Beat, really Eurobeat synth going on here. We're going to keep charming with Hero. We're basically going to use him as the hopeful sacrifice. You are the worst kind of person. We might actually die. <laughs> Missed Kel. <laughs> Missed Kel. It's, it's, it's not so bad. Ugh. Yeah, that's a problem. Just hit Hero. What do you do in this situation? Why? You lose. That's what you do. That's what you do. Everyone <laughs> explodes. That, that was that was two several crits, <laughs> emotion advantaged, all party moves <laughs> in a row. Wow. Which, yeah, cool. I could comfortably say that that is absolutely the worst thing that could possibly happen in the fight. Yeah, that was basically unwinnable. That's so, the try again, shall we? Fortunately, we do just get to try again. Hey, that's a pretty okay turn. That's an okay <laughs> opener. Is yeah, that's why Sweetheart is so volatile. There's there's really no way to stop her from running the mix if she feels like it. You just have to kind of hope she doesn't do it. I just wanted you all to hear the song again. She's just like Lamau block this overhead, and I'm just like, no. Uh, cheese wheel. You. It's pretty this likely is like that the she one, does that, but it's the worst move. This insult turn two is like the worst possible thing that could happen to you. You don't have much in the way of ability to reverse the situation. Not anymore, at least. Just kind of maybe to we'll get lucky. She doesn't crit. But like, okay, it's it's not a very good bet, but it is what it is. Again, this 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 like insult move that turns the entire party angry isn't like it might just not happen. Holy! Yeah. I mean, we really can't get. We're really not gonna get out of this again. So I'm just gonna hope she gets some more equip here. We'll try again. Insult what? Oh, he was. You're enraged. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it missed again. Stop! Yes, three <laughs> times missed. We're baby. going for it. We're gonna pull this out, even though she has like hundreds of health still. Oh my god. <laughs> Four times miss. We're getting it. This is the flip side of her high crit rate: is that she misses a ton when she becomes manic. Ah, there she there goes. There we go. Two hundred and thirteen damage. Can we can we get a little luck here? That's fine. I, I, th I think the uh, the Quality. estimate I gave earlier might be a little in danger. <laughs> it should be I fine. You're doing f I think you're doing fine. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's not that bad. These deaths aren't that long. Whiff! Good start. We'll take it. Yeah, that's that's the counterbalance of a uh, of sweetheart's focus on the happy emotion is that while she becomes manic and very hard to stop in terms of her game plan, her hit rate goes through the floor. So sometimes she will just whip everything four times in a row, and then you win. It happens. Unless she uses insult, because insult the main deal with insult is not the damage; it's the fact it changes everyone's emotion. And even if the move whiffs on characters, it will still change their emotion. Whiff number two. We're doing it. Sometimes it works. me with a motion advantage, which I, I don't think that actually does anything, but it will certainly make the sound effect. All right, if everything goes according to plan, we could actually win on this turn. Yep, it can be that quick. Yeah! A dull attack. Hero survives without much difficulty. Uses hack away, which hits three times, and each individual hit will be an emotional crit. I like how emotional crits a term in this game. Or we will attack with an she... emotional crit. Follows up. We could be, we could be a little low on damage still here. Oh, nice crit, Aubrey! One, five, Let's go. Three crit. <laughs> it can be that easy. It can be that easy.
ideally the, you'd want it to be like a like that. That's like a it could there's this rare situation so if she insults turn 1 and mace is turn 2 and doesn't kill everybody, there is a situation that exists where when Kel uses juice me in turn 3 or um in turn 2 and uh Amori gets a release off that she could die and just uh, six total hits. That's like the god fight. That will probably never happen because her macing is just scary. Even when you have the emotion advantage, she could still just tee off and kill everybody. But it's fun to think about. Even with emotional disadvantage, if she crits Kel, Kel probably dies. Mm hmm. So Space Boyfriend, he was uh, sad because he got broken up with by Sweetheart, and that's why he was mad at us. And now they're getting back together, and I'm sure it's going to last forever. Now he is Space Husband. <laughs> and then Sweetheart's just like, I'm in love, and blows up her stage. As you, as you can see, that fight took three tries. The third time looked really clean. And the first two tries were basically instant disasters, but nothing really didn't do anything fundamentally wrong any time. It's just how that fight works. The turn two insult from her is just, it's like literally the only thing you don't want to happen. It, you can even scrap it out if she starts doing it in like the third turn or later, because it still will make you angry, but if she does it in the third turn, it only does a little bit of damage. So you almost are gonna be healing anyway. So you could kind of recover from getting hit by it, and then I mean, you just kind of scrap it out at the end, but you kind turn of two, you're just at the mercy. Line. I've also just never been ma straight up maced every single turn like that before. <laughs> yeah. Like 160 damage on every character every turn. Like, great, thanks. <laughs> cool I'll game. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back later. It's, it's not that serious. Calm down. <laughs> I just want the GDQ crowd to have a good time and you're ruining it. <laughs> Way down. Did you get the double prompt? It happened twice. Oh yeah, I did. I was just holding turbo. You could just get the prompt in two times. Yeah, that <laughs> happens if you hold down turbo while doing that. You get the prompt twice. It doesn't mean anything. I just remember being really thrown by it when it happened to me the first time. Yeah, because as you can see, like you could do a lot of weird things in between loads because RPG Maker. Basically, the entire concept behind the tag stepping is that you move while the menu's opening and it kind of shuts off all of the triggers while that's happening. But not all of them. There's some things that are just unskippable for whatever reason. I have a strange theory that the triggers are like in between steps for the ones that work. And then the ones that don't work, they're like on the step. I don't know how to prove it, but I'll put my tinfoil hat on and scream it in the Discord. I believe it completely arbitrarily. L, <laughs> hold the L. Here it is, the L key. I really love the music in here. This is the, I think it's called the Lost Library or something like that. Has a lot of significance. There's a lot of lore and things to be learned in here. Has uh, some extra content too, maybe later. Right, and on that note, in an unprecedented move, I have to bow out of commentary now because it is uh, my time, 5 a.m. Uh, that makes sense. And I, I have, it's totally I have, understandable. I have real life obligations, unfortunately. <laughs> I regret. Well, we, I was told when this run would be starting and didn't think it through properly. And it dawned on me at some <laughs> point that, oh God, this run is going to go into like past 6 a.m. I was like, I can hang around for about half of that. And thankfully, thankfully the Hotfix staff have been okay with that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I have to bow out now. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, thank you for being I appreciate here. you hanging out with me and helping me explain stuff. It was very, very um, helpful. Thank and you a very lot much. of fun. It was I've, fun to be see sweetheart. I have been punchy. Bye bye. Ata. Good luck on the rest have of the night. night. Bye bye. He's just leaving because he knows what's coming up next, and it's more chores. Makes sense. I'd we have. Oh, 
So as I say, we have fully committed to never seeing anyone outside. So we're just going to do chores. And this one's dishwashing. This one might be even be less exciting than sweeping because we don't even have to move. We just sit here and hold turbo. While you're doing that really quick as well, since Punchy is leaving us, I figured I'd post. If anyone uh, did enjoy his commentary, I did post his uh, link to Twitch in the chat. Do follow Punchy. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him and the kind of runs he does. He's great. Always entertaining and a good time. Oh yeah, because of him I know about this game, so it's it's neat stuff. Oh yeah, so while you're doing the dishes, there's an eleven percent chance for any of the dishes to just for Sunny to break them. Just random time loss. What happens if they break? Nothing. You just lose time. Aww. Does that apply to, like, every dish that's unique or, like, only some dishes? I saw one was chopsticks. I'm wondering how they break chopsticks while washing them. I honestly don't know because I thought about that, too. There's, like, a there's a metal spatula yeah. and, like, and like a, a baking pan. And I'm like, those are usually metal. And how I don't are know you how you just break them. them. <laughs> We've cleaned the dishes. Now it's time to clean ourselves. Can you break yourself? I'm gonna say yes. Oh. <laughs> In the context of the game, oh, I think no. you can. <laughs> but uh, the, the tub leads into our next kind of something fear of fight. But not before we do more walking down the obscenely long stairs. And that's Mary again. Mary is Sonny's sister. There's obviously some stuff going on here, but that's a spoiler that doesn't need to be spoiled. Best left experienced. But as Punchy, I think he mentioned it earlier, he mentioned all three of the fears. This one is the fear of drowning. And they're all kind of, all the fears are linked to previous events that happened in Sunny's life, which you would learn about if you did the, <laughs> the interesting parts of the game. Right. <laughs> but uh, for now, you just kind of have to live with it. I saw we were going to be fighting another one of those, like, what was it called? The, the something, the, uh, the giant hand or the uh, spider? Yes. So this one, this is another something. It's the fear of drowning. Although it doesn't really look like the other ones. It's kind of just uh, like tentacly. But an interesting thing about this one is like if you're holding in attack, you actually can attack before the screen's loaded. So he already, we already went through a full turn. Gonna preemptively calm down because you have to calm down in all of these fights to... Sonny will learn another life skill, I'll call it. And uh, for him to use the new life skill, he has to calm down first. So I just kind of preemptively use it. Oops, I calmed down instead of using the new skill. That's okay. There we go. This one's persisting. He learns how to calm down, he learns how to focus, and he learns how to persist. Very uh, inspirational, I think. But I just like some of the imagery. Like, it's supposed to kind of, I think, kind of look like, I don't know, like underwater weeds or whatever. But, yeah. like, some of the images look like like a person and other stuff. So the artist is super talented. Omo Cat, who's the developer of the game, hand draws, hand drew all of the stuff we're looking at. It's all beautiful, so there's a good touch. The scene does have more context, <laughs> just not given. Did he fall asleep in a bathtub? Yeah, I think he, the idea is he kind of fell asleep. 
So there is a chance, and it didn't happen, that uh, there's a, a figure in your bed and you can't actually go to sleep until you leave and re-enter the room. But luckily we didn't get it. It's like, a, I think it's just a straight up 50-50 chance to happen. There's nothing that like affects it. So slight bit of RNG actually going in our favor. We'll take it. After that sweetheart fight, I think it's deserved. <laughs> That was brutal. It just be like that sometimes. So she, like I was saying, she's kind of the last barrier of the glitched run. It, we're about to get, we're about to take the target glitch and dial it up to about a hundred. But uh, we have a little bit of progressing to do first. Not much, but a little bit. This is my favorite like transition cutscene from the real world back into headspace. It kind of like, in my mind, it kind of like just like solidifies what's really going on inside Sonny's head. Like when he goes to sleep, he pretends he's he has like a subconscious that's somebody else. It's not him. I think that's really really great imagery. Don't understand this picture though, because we come out of like white space into the neighbor room where our friends usually are and no one's there. So I'm not really sure if he's just like thinking about them or what, <laughs> cause they're not here. But don't worry, we won't be without a party member for too long. Cause Kel's waiting up here for us. So right now, while we're lacking the other two party members, until we get a third one back, we can't actually do any tag stepping. So there's nothing we can skip for the time being. But there's not really much that happens. Like, theoretically, you might be able to skip this, but none of the overcoming the fears in this game, I think, are skippable when you come across them. So we would never know if there are actually flags or not. This game is coded surprisingly well. There's not a lot of opportunity to, like, out of bounds break it. Only, like, in the confines of redirecting unintended skills and whatnot. But what Kel tells you, so every everybody's kind of missing. Like, if you went back to the playground, everybody's gone. And what Kel tells you when he finds <laughs> when you find them is that they all got jobs at this resort casino place. So we're going to we're going to go there and try and get a uh, Aubrey and Hero back. You're gone so long, everybody went and got jobs for whatever reason. That's just how it goes, right? Also, is that another yeah. key? Yeah, it's an M key. I uh, so have to get our M's in chat. I always get nervous that I'm going to forget a key. I've never done it. It's really hard to forget a key, but I just like, it's one of those things that's always in the back of your mind. You're like, oh, if I forget this key. Luckily, I didn't skip the fast travel scene, so if I happen to miss something, it won't be too hard to get back. So I'm actually kind of curious now, because I don't know if we've mentioned it entirely. Obviously, I guess that's something with the story of the game. Uh, what are the keys ultimately used for? It will be explained, but so in the second, when we came back to white space the second time, which is the room it starts you in, um, it had you look at the laptop, right? And it showed you it showed you a hangman game. So you're playing, um, you're sol you're grabbing the right keys to solve the puzzle because we that's like uh, the flag to go to the end of the game, huh? So really, it's all based on a game of hangman. Mm -hmm. And there's do? some uh, symbolism and rationale to that as well. Huh. I'm just going to say, given the theme of this game and uh, kind of the theme of the show, I don't know if I quite like the notion of what might be leading to. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of darkness in this game. Wait, how many did I get? Just one. We need two sticks of dynamite. The shady goo, goo man is selling us dynamite. It's for a new strat that we kind of re recently developed for the upcoming boss. Mary didn't get a job, though. Mary's just on her blanket. There's a lot of fun stuff with collecting all of the keys, even the... Wait. Yeah, we do need to go here. 
This place has, is, I like that text. It's like, this pool looks like it's haunted. Want to go in? I'm like, yeah, I do. But this place also has some of the best music in the game. It's my personal favorite song. I don't know why, I just love it. It's just a secret area called, or it's not really a secret. You have to come here to get that key, that O key, but it's called Ghost Party. And it's a, it's a side quest area where you get tasked with finding ghosts around the, the whole game world and inviting them to this party. The O key. Five keys left. Sounds about right. That's all we needed. And then we're going to make a quick stop at this mailbox. And we're going to buy some rotten milk. Because rotten milk is going to turn into our new juice me move. But rotten milk is uh, slightly more busted than juice me in the fact that it's a skill. It's an item that you're not supposed to be able to target enemies with. But through the target glitch, we can. But rotten milk hitting something does just straight up 50% of their health, like their total health. So two rotten milks will kill anything. Huh. I wonder so, why it works out with enemies. It's just a weird... So it would do that to you too. So like if you used rotten milk on yourself, it would take 50% of your HP. It's just like a weird item you're not supposed to use. <laughs> also pee. Oh yeah, <laughs> pee key on the toilet. No, I'm sure that wasn't intentional. I mean, we had the melons earlier for the chest, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's a so oh. we know. Oh, god. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it, I was just gonna say we know that the our friends are on the fifth floor, but we can't go to the fifth floor until we find a special key card, which happens to be on the second floor. All right. I was just gonna ask. So, does the rotten milk have a use that isn't killing your characters? It does replenish a small amount of juice, but it's not significant. So I really, it really doesn't. Huh. Yeah, it's it's very strange, and it was very, it was while we were discovering the target glitch and like the implications of it. Somebody was just like, "I wonder if we could throw rotten milk on the boss," and then the rest was history. The boss we're about to fight in particular has a pretty funny reaction with rotten milk. Also, aside from the dynamite we bought outside, we also bought a bottle of water, which is what this character asks for to get out of the way. So we just get it ahead of time. We used to get it in the basement of this place, which took slightly longer than just straight up buying it. So now we just preemptively are ready. Q key? We don't need the Q key. So given that the letters are based on a hangman, is there a penalty if you do grab the Q key? No. It, it Every time you grab a correct key, it tells you how many is left. Uh, grabbing all of the keys does have some sort of function in the game, but it's not a penalty per se. All right. Also, so we got uh, Aubrey back. Yeah, so we found Aubrey. She's acting as a receptionist with, like, six phones around her. And it's pretty funny. Like, they're all kind of working here, and they... The whole purpose of everything we're doing is we're trying to find Basil still. Like, Basil's missing, and everywhere we're going, we're trying to look for Basil. And, you know, as everybody is working here, they kind of forgot about Basil and, like, what we're doing. So they kind of get reminded, and it snaps Aubrey out of it. So this elevator is unusual, unnecessarily long for like no reason. It's just like a small cutscene where Kel annoys everybody by whistling. And we're not, we're gonna get Hero back shortly, and it's not gonna be explained because after you've beaten the game once, you're able to skip boss cutscenes, like the cutscene leading up to them, and. Uh, Basically, Hero's a superstar a worker here, so he just is the the boss's favorite. And when we try to recruit him, 
Uh, it's what leads to starting this next boss fight. Asking for everybody to leave makes this boss fight us. He gets mad that we're taking away his best worker. But we also got this sick 90s-ish pop jam in here. There we go. I was like, it's not skipping. So fun strat here. We're gonna... We're gonna Rotten Milk Jossum. And then we're gonna Dynamite with Kel and Hero. So when Jossum gets hit while the Gator guys are in front of him, the damage actually gets dispersed. But for us, Rotten Milk goes straight through him, which is great. So we're gonna kill Jossum, which makes it look like the fight's over, but it's not, because we still have to kill the gator guys, but the second dynamite will do it for us. It's a little funny interaction. It does the gray screen like the fight's over, but we still have to get rid of the gator guys. I imagine that's like normally a tough boss fight and everything, right? Not particularly. That's actually one of the fairly easiest ones. It's Fairly, we, we figured out a pretty consistent strat for it outside of the dynamite before we figured out we could just dynamite it and make it a one turn. But it was a pretty consistently a two turn fight. And now we have to fight Pluto. Pluto is uh, Jossum's bodyguard. Everybody has a job here. Pluto, our friend, <laughs> turns into a massive Pluto. So we can say Pluto's a planet now. Yes. Pluto expanded. So even though it only takes two rotten milks to kill something, uh, I queue up all three, because you never know. Like, So when Pluto gets hit here for half his health, he goes into a different phase. If he happens to kill, I don't know, he can't really kill Aubrey or Amori. See you later, hero, it doesn't matter. But if you were happen to kill somebody before they got the milk off or something, just ha it's nice to have a backup queued up. So, so really, the rest of the fights are going to go a lot like this. <laughs> it's wild to think that you're just throwing just, like rotten milk at enemies and like just ha it just it just works. It just works. Milk gives you strong bones and <laughs> defeats your enemies. <laughs> it's like disintegrating their bones. It's <laughs> yeah, the it's evil like an milk. adverse. <laughs> but after <laughs> after we beat Pluto, he's like, "All right, it's just an even my final form kind of kind of reference." But then Jossum's like, "All right, enough." And he uh, eventually lets it say, "Because Jossum's Jossum doesn't really seem like that bad of a guy. He's just a you know, he's a businessman. He's a shark." But ultimately, he cares deeply about Hero because he's his best worker. But he uh, eats up our contract and we're allowed to leave. I guess it's a way to make it work. And then the nice thing about having Hero back is he gives us a VIP badge, which makes all the elevators go faster. So this elevator that took like a minute takes like five seconds now. And then the other ones are even faster. There's a cutscene skip to get out of here that I'm going to attempt to not fail. We'll see if we can get it. It's one of the it's not a super long one, but it's more than a single step. Wait, we want to go to the first floor. And generally, the ones that take a bunch of steps are a little more awkward to do. The tag who's are back. There we go. Nice. That's like a about a forty-eight second cutscene skip. That's uh, one so of the it's pretty good. ones. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. It uh, only took two hours <laughs> to get it down. We're doing getting it. a groove. <laughs> All right, and now that we have, uh, if you were to try and go past here before, you can't skip through this. Also, I see people scene. in chat and asking. No, we're not going to grab the queue, apparently. 
No, we don't need the key. We could have grabbed it. It's completely inconsequential to just grab a few wrong keys. You can but, type uh, we it don't you need want. It. Yeah, if you want to say, feel free. We like the alphabet here. There is a Q in GDQ, so that is we can allow it. This is the probably the longest skip. I'm going to try to not mess up. We have to get all the way to Sweetheart standing here. One more. All right. You just went in, inside of her. Uh, yep. Huh. Stop spinning. There we go. So yeah, she doesn't basically exist. <laughs> Did I spend? Okay, I didn't end up spending more money. A funny, a funny thing about Hero here is uh, the Gators also work for Jossum, so they offer a toll booth price. But if you're Hero and decline to pay the price, they'll actually offer to lower the price for you to get through. Hero also gets a discount buying at all mailboxes. I don't know if that ever came up earlier. Because Hero's like a charmer, and that's like his uh, whole ability. Because we actually skipped learning about it. S key, we do need that one. Oh, so now we have an S. But we have enough money to just pay the toll straight up, so I switch back to Amori to avoid a little bit of dialogue. But yeah, when I was uh, testing out that sweetheart skip where you can actually stand inside her, I didn't think you could. So I was going past her and another runner was like, no, you can just stand inside her. There we go. That's another pretty long cut scene. So this area is called Deeper Well. Kind of like uh, there's a lot of weird creatures to talk to in this area that kind of dig into some more nuanced topic of what's the overarching story here. But you can kind of just picture it as like the deep recesses of Amori's brain, his conscious, or Sonny's, sorry, I always do that. You play as Amori for so long, I forget Sonny's a person because all you do is wash dishes and sweep the floors with them. Apparently break pans, spatulas, and uh, everything in the sink, apparently. I like the contrast of like the soothing music as you're walking through that last area to get to hear. Oh, yeah. I just like how beautiful this game is. And we can run again. Woohoo! <laughs> and we get to meet our another, another fun character. This is Humphrey, the whale. Why is there a whale in Amori's subconscious? Who knows? But we were trying to follow Sweetheart, and he tells us that uh, Sweetheart's inside, along with others, and invites us to come in. And we're going to do it. Because sure. <laughs> and it turns out Humphrey's just a big old dungeon. So actually, uh, we have a question in chat really quick that I think is pretty good. I think we did talk about it earlier, but it's a nice reminder. Um, if you skip any of the cutscenes in the game, can you re-trigger the cutscenes by coming back to it later? Yes. Every All of the triggers are still active. And um, any of the single step ones, if you just turn around and step right back on it, it will just trigger the cutscene again. Luckily, for the most part, there's only a couple. Uh, there's only a couple triggers that you'll go over more than once. So it's not really much of an issue. Like if you happen to get past the trigger while you're trying, once you're past, you're good. 
But one that I didn't actually get was before the boss we skipped earlier. Um, where I actually saved uh, with Punchy's advice. <laughs> um, that cutscene needs to be skipped twice because you'll skip over it one time and then you come up past the trigger again in a different hallway. So Humphrey, he has three separate paths. Each path kind of has like a an objective and this one's defusing a bomb that's inside Humphrey. Oh. Luckily, this puzzle doesn't actually require you to go through the the steps to figure out the answers first. You could just do the puzzles. All right, I have to ask, what if you cut the wrong order? Oh, I'll show you what happens when it goes wrong. Oh. I'll show you. Oh. <laughs> Well, I always heard about bomb defusal as uh, either one, you get the answer correct, or two, it's not your problem anymore. Yeah, it's kind of nobody's problem, but <laughs> it's not a... <laughs> I'll, it's definitely going to explode, but it's not bad. All right. <laughs> so if, like, you, they, we have to pick a puzzle here. If you pick the wrong one, uh, uh, you get a sad face and an explosion and some sad music. But luckily, you're just right here still. But the getting exploded on does put everybody's health to one. So it's just kind of important that I remember to save or uh, heal up before we get into the, the end part. Just in case. The wire one actually took me a while to figure out casually. I could not see what the answer to the puzzle was. Like, so you, when you activate the puzzle, it activates the teleporter and you would go down there and traverse whatever was there for you to figure out the answers. And then the, the red portal was, I was very blind to the answers. But that's it. After the three puzzles, we're done this with this part of Humphrey. Opens up our portal to get out. When we get to meet uh, the slime girl, that's what these people, these uh, creatures are. They're called the slime girls. We get to meet the one who was on the computer talking to us. And the whole reason Sweetheart's here is because she's over trying to find love with uh, like another person. So she's trying to find a clone of herself so she could get married to the clone. Because, yeah, uh, her and uh, Space Husband are broken up already. We didn't get to see the cutscene. We actually skipped that. That was the toll booth cutscene we skipped. Oop, on the raft. The order you do these in doesn't really matter. Switch to Aubrey because she's the the main person we need in this one. As you can see, there's like a sort of a mechanic where we smack little Humphrey bulbs and they turn into bridges and stuff for us. There is a couple skips in this section, not not quite yet. For now, we're just smacking little Humphrey bridges and uh, trying not to get caught by enemies. Uh, we're going to get caught. All right, we'll bring him over here. Oops, that's okay. Normally, at this point, you can single, single try run from everything. I'm actually going to grab this. Just an extra full party heal, just in case. I think we still have one more full party heal, and that's all we really need. But it never hurts to have extra healing. Just in case. So here's a cutscene we can skip. Nice. Not nice. <laughs> 
Nice, all right. Sometimes dodging the enemies in here is just not easy. They they do weirdly predictive movements to try and block where you're going. At least that's how it feels to me. Maybe I'm just bad. <laughs> So this whole uh, section has a sort of a gimmick to it, and we can skip the gimmick, but I'm not going to because it doesn't actually save that much time. Because most of, most of chat probably hasn't seen what happens in this area, but you can at least skip the effect of it. And it's a chase scene. This monster chases us. And we have to like solve the puzzle. If it catches you, you have to start the puzzle all over again, but it's not too bad. That first part's probably the scariest part of the whole chase. But yeah, you can tag step over the trigger and just not get chased at all. Oops. Hit one I wasn't supposed to. That's okay. So we can... Skip there. There's a scene at the end there, too, where it looks like we're kind of cornered by the cat chasing us. And then a hot dog falls on it. <laughs> But it's kind of a slow cutscene, so it's nice to skip. And we get another slime girl trying to make another clone. The first clone was a robot version of Sweet Call Heart called Robo Heart. That one's called Mutant Heart, and it looks kind of deformed. All battered. One more path to go. Nice. Sometimes that bubble just kind of moves in your way. Just kind of hope it doesn't. This whole section's about making little bridges with the Humphreys. But fun fact, you have to talk to the... You have to talk to the ones that start making the bridges first in order to actually have them go make the bridge. And uh, it would be really unfortunate to forget to do that. Definitely never done that before. Oof, that was close. See here, I like to see... Let's see if we can get it. Uh, nice. I kind of just like to see where that one is. We have to go up here anyway at some point. All right, hold on, we have a skip. Uh, I was one step early. I kind of forgot where the trigger was. That's okay. It's not a very long cutscene. We're in this like lab area and they're admiring the stuff. Oh, we'll come back to that one later. It's completely blocked, so it's not even worth trying right now. Mm -hmm. Nice. Just trying not to get into any fights here. Sometimes their positioning is just bad. What are you doing? Come get me. Ugh, okay, whatever. Yeah, at least it's out of the way, because what this one does is it can block the only pathway out. And it can, like, stop you at the bottom of the ladder. You can't get blocked at the bottom of the ladder. It, like, won't move into those spaces. But it can keep you from getting out of the area, and hopefully we can get out before it comes back. All right, nice. You're almost guaranteed to get into a fight with it one time. So as long as you can keep it to one, that's pretty good. Gathering our last few Humphreys in the area. Actually, I actually have a question on routing really quick, if you don't mind. Um, sure. So the community and just kind of like run like this in general, because um, I've never really, I know a bit about Amori because I've watched Punchy play a lot of it, but for RPG speedrunning, I really only have experience with the game called Sweet Home. 
I know with RPGs you tend to be really under leveled. So I guess what I'm asking is, how did you, how did the community find like, oh, if I'm this level, if I have these stats, then I can go through the game? Because I remember watching things like Sweetheart. It seems like it's very specific on what you need to happen. I was just a lot of trial and error, honestly. So the first route had a lot of level grinding. Oh, or a bit of level grind. I won't say it's a lot. Right. Um, they actually grinded from level four to level seven before Space Boyfriend, because that gives Amori a skill called Mock, which right. is pretty good. So what it does is, um, if if the enemy's angry and Amori uses Mock on it, it actually lowers their attack value as far as it could possibly be lowered. Um, and our strat early on was to make everything angry while everything was happy. So it kind of was just like a natural melding of strats. But really, all it came down to was whatever somebody would do to get past a boss first somebody would just try and see if they could do it without any of the level grinding involved and then we actually came to the conclusion that there was no grinding necessary to beat the game even before we had these broken skills like when we had to fight all of the bosses legit hmm. mock mock was a pretty big skill like it lowers their attack by 30 percent um and that ended up being kind of a big deal with that, it's surviving like damage thresholds. And kind of just a lot of luck. Sweetheart, it, no matter what, Sweetheart has always been like a fight where it was just complete luck, whether you'd win or not. The old Sweetheart without like busted strats was just terrible. It was, it was like a 10 plus round fight, just praying she didn't kill you at any point. <laughs> So it's kind of nice to have it, at least when it goes wrong, it goes wrong pretty quick. The old way was a lot of clinging to dear life. But yeah, basically just a lot of so-and-so did it this way, but can we do it without doing X, Y, and Z? And Eventually it came down to, no, we don't really need to do anything. Oh, hey, that's always a neat thing. Also, I do know that I also heard from, uh, I think, Punchy when he was uh, when he's heading out. I've seen a lot of the Amori community watching in chat, so it's been kind of interesting just watching a lot of that. Oh, wait, does that work? It ha Oh, but, like, just a lot of the curiosity as we... Because I guess you guys found a new skip last week or something, right? Yeah, probably about a week and a half ago. It was definitely after you asked me if I would like to run this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was actually on vacation at the time, and as soon as I found it, I was like, well, I got to practice these skips because I would really like to show them off because they're not like, so you, you mess it up, you have to watch a cutscene, not the end of the world. So I was like, if I can at least learn and get through some of them, it'd be pretty cool to show off. But yeah, so it is fun to see like what you can actually do with this game because it's just gotten more and more broken as speedruns tend to. Of course. The longer they get routed out. But this game's come a long way from what it started out as. I think the very first run, which was a, a true ending speedrun, so it was longer. It was always going to be longer than what this ended up being, but it was about eight hours. And then it uh, then it went down to about five, and now we're below three hours. So, and now this uh, so like the sub sub two fifty was the last threshold, and now with the new skips we. It's definitely possible to go sub 240, so we've knocked another 10 minutes off. And it's pretty cool, like, there's a lot of effort of people just, like, always, always messing around. It always seems like somebody's trying to figure something out, or even just playing casually and finding some things that are strange like that. So I gotta heal real quick. Not worried about saving, just the boss we're about to fight has an attack if they choose to do it that hits everybody, and that would just be a problem if we are at one health. So it actually ends up where uh, we end up fighting the slime girls because they need money and we don't have money for Sweetheart's experiments. I know what you're thinking, and the answer is yes. Their boss theme also slaps. 
That's one of the thoughts I had. The other thought I had is, can you pay them off? Uh, there is a video. They they need a million. Oh, wait, we're about to do the wrong glitch. Uh, they need a million dollars, and I've personally never done it, but there are videos of people who have accumulated the money. Huh. I never happened to look into it. It's definitely not going to be faster, is it? No. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I think you end up fighting them anyway. Well, hey. But there's just, like, additional dialogue kind of thing. I mean, a million dollars, rotten milk, it's practically the same thing. Yeah, it's you can have a million dollars, or you could just, you know, milk. Rotten milk. Rotten milk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we could skip this, all right. So, a, a side consequence is that, uh, ultimately, they can't get the money, and they can't... Humphrey's getting hungry. They can't get the money for him, so he eats them. He actually eats Sweetheart, too, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen what actually plays out in the cutscene. And now we get to fight Humphrey. Humphrey, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Humphrey has three phases. This first phase, why didn't that work? I like how his taste buds are dancing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we want to hit him with a hit the whole party with a quick heal. So he has three phases, and um, this first phase he has ten, uh, I think ten thousand health. You're not really supposed to be able to beat it because it ends after five turns, regardless. <laughs> but fortunately for us, the rotten milk takes it down to a single turn. Somebody, okay, that's actually really great that he hit a Mori, so we have everybody alive for turn three. Oh, this whale is not having a good time. Oh, no, he's having a bad day. We're probably... It depends. So we're going to move past the next phase already because we queued up three. It actually hits one in the next phase. So as long as he doesn't kill Aubrey here, we'll end the, the fight. But this fight took a crazy amount of time the old way because it just kind of like feel it just keeps going. And as you can see, like, it's always doing half of his health. So, like, this phase he has 6,000. The last phase he has about 3,750 or something. And while you get a little stronger by this point in the game, you're not strong enough to win each round in a single turn. And this game's... I, I like this fight a lot because it makes you feel like it's never-ending. And it's like, okay, well, now you're fighting Humphrey's uvula, but, you know, what happens when you touch somebody's uvula? <laughs> Just ends the fight. That's the final end to the fight. And we finally get out by uh, way of him regurgitating. And it takes you through the phases. I I really like that fight a lot casually because when you don't know what you're doing, it really does have a feel like it's never going to end. You're just going to continually do it until you either die or like... I, at one point I was playing it casually, I thought the it was just going to be like, okay, you can't actually beat Humphrey. Like, you can't win. But you can and will. So there's two of our last two keys, the T and W. We do need both of them. Alternate type. I think, I think the T key you can actually pick up. It's in the uh, upper part of Humphrey. You can grab it along the way, but if you don't, the game doesn't at least soft lock you and spits it back out. So it's just faster to ignore it. W. Finally, the dub. We'll look in the hall. I didn't mean to do it, but we did. So I, I, if you're paying attention, as you keep getting these keys, the correct keys, there's like a there's like holes that get increasingly larger underneath them. 
Because you probably didn't even really notice like when we were picking up the A key. It was just like a tiny spot. And by the end here, there are massive holes right. in the ground. So there is a path that opens up behind Humphrey. With this new route, since we would skip the fast travel, it would actually be faster to take the route behind Humphrey, which is slower normally, but you can't take the fast travel. So doing that way instead of running all the way back out the normal way is preferable. But since we didn't do the cutscene right, we can actually just take the fast travel, which is the fastest way back out of here because we have one more key we need to snag. And it's actually a key that's really close to the beginning of the game. Like, as soon as you get over your fear of being able to climb ladders and stuff, uh, you can go get this key. But it's timed out. It's about a... It's 50 seconds out of the way right now to get this key. It's about, like, a minute 20, minute 30 to grab it at any other time in the game, like, when you're in the area. So it just makes sense to wait until now. Just trying my best not to run into any of these enemies. They are like the beginning game enemies, so they're not like scary or anything like that. But you never, you just don't want to touch anything. No, no enemies. And here's our last key, the C key. Did anybody figure out what the words were yet with the letters we got? C. <laughs> you probably only you saw the T. L. So you only got a, like a quick glimpse of the board. There it is. Welcome to black space. And getting all of the correct keys is the trigger you need to be able to progress towards an ending in this route of the game. Basil's house has gone through quite the landscaping remodel while we were gone. Oh, that's a mode, a bloody <laughs> mode. love what you've done with the place. And one thing I didn't really mention, as you progress through some of the cutscenes that we skipped over, it's it's pretty eerie. Like, the main characters kind of... Like, Aubrey, Hero, and Kel, they kind of just forget that Basil's even a person and that they're even looking for him by the end of the game. And it's all kind of symbolic of what's going down now and what the real story is kind of all about. But it's just the, the conversations, it, the music's kind of like almost always happy in Headspace or whatever, but it's like eerie the way they're just like not concerned anymore. There's a slight pause here. I don't know why, but it takes a little longer to load after that part than some other parts of the game. But now we get to run to Basil's newly remodeled house. There's a bunch of cutscene skips we can do. We'll try our best to get most of them. Nice, good, pretty favorable enemy movement. All right, you want to? Nah, that's okay. This one takes like I think uh, three steps to skip, so. If you're not quick with it, it's not necessarily faster to skip it. Oops. So at these gardens, which are now just dead flowers, you can skip a cut. You can skip kind of a scene. Eh, I was a step early. Still learning some of these uh, spots. That's okay. If you if you can't get it in a, uh, this one, I don't even know if it's possible to skip because I've I've gone all the way left to almost the complete edge and it still triggered the cutscene. So I'm not positive you can get past this one unless you're going to stutter or tag step all the way to the end. And at that point, it's just not worth it. We got a couple of them. Kind of kind of really inconsequential cutscenes to skip. They're very short. But, you know, if you if you get pretty consistent with your tag step, which you can, you can be like a first try kind of thing. It just takes some practice and maybe a little less nerves, but you can uh, get some value and time save out of those. I don't even bother trying to skip that one. It's just two dialogues. It's 
So here we are in Basil's home. <laughs> and we're just going to jump in the hole, because why not? See, it's like a Silent Hill game. Yeah. It kind of get this. This part is pretty wacky. There's no more boss fights or anything. It's kind of just um, movement and wrap up at this point. But uh, at least it's slightly more interesting than the beginning of the game. So once you uh, hit Humphrey, it's pretty much home free at that point. Yeah, once you're past Humphrey, there's nothing else that can really stop you. It was asked about other route. Do other routes have like a, fi like a final boss that isn't Humphrey or? Um, you're always to get to the end of the game. You're always going to fight Humphrey, but there are additional things and stuff that happen for different pathways. There's a lot of secret bosses in this game, like tons. But no, I think it, no matter what, you're always going to end on Humphrey to get to the end of the game. Found it. A, a new door. We're going to go to black space. We've been starting every one of these sections in white space. Now we're in black space. And we even get a nice welcome, friendly welcome. Black space got a lot of doors. Really all we're just gonna keep doing is we're gonna go through a handful of doors and then eventually the final door that you need to is, uh, will trigger itself. You don't have to go through every one of the doors here. Just, I think, eight? I wanna say eight of them. There's way more than eight and each of them have like these wacky scenes, like what's even happening right now? <laughs> But you're finally talking to this Shadow Basil, which is now referred to as the Stranger. And basically every door we come into, we're just looking for a key. And then we're going to look for one of these red hands to take us out of the room. Red hands are also symbolic of something in its own right. But they actually help us out in the speed run. And that's what's most important. <laughs> now there are there are six doors that are closer than all the other doors, but once you're past like the sixth door, most of the other doors are almost the exact same amount of steps away, because I am super tedious that I went through the I went through to see wait, where is that? There it is. I went through is this oh, hello? <laughs> I went through to see which doors were closer than others. To find that uh, the first six were pretty much the ones you would always go to naturally, and then the other ones didn't really matter. I like this one a lot because all of these little doors, you can like knock on the doors or you can go inside some of these houses and there's even more weird events that happen. This game has an interesting like RNG value in it, and it's called the WTF value, which I think is determined at the uh, beginning of the run. Also, I'm reading, it doesn't change uh, ever. I'm reading in chat really quick. Apparently, we should be aware about an epilepsy warning. I'm trying to. I yes, I don't know. I'll just say there may or may not be flashing lights coming on the screen soon. <laughs> yeah, I would take their word for it. I just I, it's so it's a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, I'm just autopilot and don't even really think about anymore. All good. I figure I just uh, read something. I put the alert out there. Yeah, no, I, that's totally fair. And I'm sure they're right. Sonny, I love you. That's not creepy, right? 
We got a new friend, a new party member. Perfect. <laughs> Our best friend, the something. I think it's after the doors. I, I, I'm sure I'll think about it as soon as it like is about to happen. This room is not fun, but there's you don't actually have to do what is implied in this room. That's the only way out for this one. I like the music in here. <laughs> it's just like strange, but it is. It's like fun to listen to. There's a lot of rooms with like basal interactions. Most of them that we don't get to go in because they're additional to what we need to to get the last door to show up. I just kind of walk left for a little bit and eventually, eventually we'll fade out into the next part. You don't even have to walk all the way out here. You can just like move back and forth and in, in the spot you're in, but find it a little more consistent to just keep walking. So now we want to get these melons. And eventually basil <laughs> crumbles like one of the melons for whatever reason. <laughs> it's not symbolism, I swear. Get out of my way. So these eyes that you can see moving around, those are actually like physical other strangers and you can run into them. <laughs> so they're kind of annoying because if they're looking upwards, you can't see their eyes. So you just kind of run into them. That's the last one we need to do. I go through the red door. So now we're in the home stretch, but it's still there's still room. If if the game wasn't wacky enough, there's still room for it to get even wackier. Here we, here we have Basil, trapped by the something in this church. <laughs> this is kind of Silent Hilly, right? Like, Silent Hill likes churches. Yeah. So it turns out, like, this is the actual Basil we've been looking for that, like, disappeared from the beginning conversations, I guess. Really, what the stranger is doing here is kind of like acting like a sort of last line of reasoning in Sunny's head. Again, it's like another chase scene like earlier, but you can't really get away, so it's just easier to run straight into it and faster. I always thought the imagery in these next coming, like this fight we're about to do, which isn't, uh, it's not really a fight, but this and then the imagery in the fight was always really good. Like, I just think this picture is so cool. But you'll notice we're still in head headspace, but we're doing this fight as Sunny. You can't do anything, you just sit here and attack it out. I 
and eventually the fight just kind of ends. So I think this is the part that was referred to. This might be where the epilepsy stuff might happen. So just, just forewarning. I will say if you play this game, I highly recommend playing it with like headphones on or like earbuds or something so you can hear the the sound effects and music really good. So I always thought the sound design was really well done for just an RPG and an RPG maker game in general. Unfortunately, there's nothing left to tag skip either, so we're kind of just, you know, doing it. Just your uh, casual hand thrown. Nothing to see here. Obviously, red hands having a lot of symbolism for one reason or another. And then I thought this part was so cool because it's like the the something's devouring the stranger. The stranger's giving up. And really all that's left now is we get to walk up like a long stairway made of these hands. Because <laughs> why not? So we're getting extremely close to time too. It's about like another minute and a half away, but I'll get a, give a much closer warning. I really feel like the music on each scene is a little symbolic of kind of the walk in some ways without going into too much detail. Now we got circus music. That's never good, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's horror games and circuses don't usually have good, good implications. No, we're just going to go to bed, though. Like, nothing's wrong. Say so time's coming up in about, like, I don't know, like 20 seconds. Once we step out of bed and do some final inputs, that's what time is.
And time. Ugh. Well, sorry about that. Hey, <laughs> Sweetheart hours. really took it to us. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much for letting me show off this game on uh, GDQ. It's it's a really fun run. It's a really great game, casually, uh, that everybody should uh, should look into. If you're interested in the speedrun, there is an Amori speedrunning Discord. Uh, you can find that on the speedrun.com page. Plenty of people always willing to chat about the game, help you out, teach you things. Uh, I am RJ. You can find me at twitch.tv slash RJ. But again, thanks so much for having me. Hope y'all enjoyed the run. And that's it? Yeah, you pretty much uh, got most of the questions I normally ask. Uh, you have the Discord there. Um, I'm going to post your link in chat if anyone doesn't want to check you out. I want to say thank you for running a morning. Also, thank you for Punchy for being here earlier for the run. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Punchy. It was a good time. I had, had a great time, <laughs> despite the nonsense. And it all worked out. It was a fun run. Uh, that being said... Uh, oh, wait, you're saying? Nope. All good. Uh, that being said, we're going to go over to a quick break as we set up our last r uh, run of the show. We still have one more coming up. It should be fun stuff. This is going to be a good time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs. Once again, RJ, I want to thank you for running Amori. And as well, for anyone else, uh, if you missed out on any of the GDU Hotpick shows, you can check out an archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick. Anyway, we're going to be right back very quick. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you all enjoyed Amori. It's a nice treat of a game, and it's an unexpected horror game that I think hits quite nicely for a lot of people. It has a lot of those neat horror RPG vibes. It's a particular type of genre that I really appreciate, so I want to be able to show that with all of you. And RJ did a great job showing it as well. That being said, our next game is going to be a slight inverse of things. We had a game that was overwhelmingly cute with a bit of horror sprinkled in. Uh, this one's going to be a lot more horrific with a bit of cute sprinkled in, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Anyway, our last game of the night is going to be Yomawari Night Alone featuring Starwin. So take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm back again. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing Yomawari Night Alone. As Ekdysis did say, this is uh, a lot spookier. Uh, has it's, it's really cute, but it's got some spooky elements to it. So uh, let's uh, take a journey through Yomwari Night Alone. So I'll count it down. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so this game takes uh, place in a small little village. Uh, apparently when this village is... Uh, basically hits night, all these spooky demons come out, like these yokai. And this is the uh, main protagonist. Her name is uh, Protagonist. Does not have a name. Um, apparently there was a novel version of this of this game. And in the novel, they named her Kotomo, but uh, we're just going to say Protag. And we're walking our dog, Poro, our cute little dog, Poro, as we're getting a pretty much a tutorial of the uh, basics of the game. Like, for example, right here, we're going to go up to this rock. We can pick up the rock. And then we can throw the rock. After we select it, of course. And then we press X to throw it. I'm sorry. The game's <laughs> sorry, very everybody. dark. I'm sorry, everybody. I it hurts me to watch that uh that cutscene. It really does. Um also this game is very uh atmospheric. It doesn't have it doesn't have any music. There's one area that's gonna have a small little soundtrack. But for the most part, you're just going to get ambient noise, which I, I think adds to the uh, the horror element of this game. Yes, chat, I, I, I apologize. Definitely not fun to see that. So we're walking back home. Our sister is there. Her name is Sis. 
And she's wondering where Poro's at. And she th insists is thinking, oh, Poro ran away. Well, we need to go find him. So Sis tells us to stay at home as she goes to find Poro. As you can see, it's a uh, sun is uh, setting. We are entering the uh, evening time in this town. But second the sun's gone, that's when the spookies come out. So, all right. So our little pro tag is worried about our sister. So we're gonna go find her, or her sister, I should say. Uh, so the little meter at the very bottom of the screen is a stamina meter. Um, if uh, enemies are nearby, the demons, my stamina will go down a lot quicker. I will be doing little methods to kind of regain my stamina. Like right here, I'm just going to slowly rapid tap. I'm going to at least be able to move a little bit quicker than I usually do. It's definitely a lot quicker than just walking. Oh, I actually went the wrong way. I need to go down. And we cannot see the enemy yet because we don't have the flashlight. There's another one. Those are like the basic uh, yokais, essentially. And we're going to go up here while mashing X. The second the heartbeat stops, that's when I can start like holding down the stamina button again. But for the most part, I'm going to be tapping a lot. There's just too many. There's too many enemies in this game. Uh, the main trick that we do in this game, and it's pretty common speedrun strategy in some games, we're going to be doing death abuse, essentially to the point where I'm going to save at these little statues, and then once I grab a certain item, I'm going to die on purpose so I can go back to said statue. Uh, we'll be doing that a lot throughout the run. Hey, there's Sis. Sis seems kind of worried, so she's telling us to hide in this bush, which is a, another mechanic, telling us not to open our eyes. And Sis has disappeared. And welcome to the main premise of the game. Is us trying to find our sister through uh, during one night in this town. Alrighty, here we go. And now we're going to get Sis's flashlight. The flashlight, yet another very, very important item. Uh, it allows us to see the enemies. If we do not flash light at the enemies, or there's no light hitting the enemies, we can't see them. Like this guy. Look at that guy. He's really big. We're going to run away. And now we're going to get uh, pincered. Now, the game wants us to use our newfound ability of hiding in the bush, but we are actually not going to do that. Because we can... Uh, I essentially positioned myself to where... I have enough room to squeeze by that one guy. So, and now we're just going to head back to the house. So there, there's like, I think like six chapters. There's a guy right there. We don't want to get touched by him. Um, this game is pretty brutal in terms of uh, dying. If you die without saving at certain spots, the game will throw you back at the beginning of whatever, you, whatever stage you're doing. You need to save. Uh, thankfully, that's what these statues are for. And the coins that we just picked up, these will allow us to save. They also act as warp points as well. We will be uh, using that uh, throughout the run. So we're going to give a coin to that one, get a quick save, and we're going to grab one more coin, and we're going to keep heading back to our house as we pay really close attention to our stamina. Uh, there is a sequel to this game. It's called Midnight Shadows, and... You know, this run takes about 45 minutes to speed run, but man, Midnight Shadows apparently takes almost as long as Omori was. It's a really long game. Huh. Oh, and this is why we don't want to get near these manholes because we'll get grabbed by these guys and they don't, they won't kill you. They literally just hold you uh, until like an enemy were to come by and kill you. But for speed running purposes, you just lose time. Apparently, Sis is not here, so I guess we're going to go inside and we're going to write in our little journal. And then we're going to go back out into the night and explore. Beep, up, beep, up, beep, up, beep, up. All 
All right, so at this point, you can actually explore the town. You can find a lot of little things you can do. You can feed little cats that run around. Um, you can actually find strange and unique uh, yokais. Uh, I think there's a couple of... There's like a few side missions. I don't really remember. It has been about three years since I actually like played this game. But right here, I'm just dodging... Uh, enemies essentially and we're following this ghost this it's like a ghost dog and of course the our little protagonist is uh being like oh it has to be it has to be poro and i gotta be careful right here uh there are a lot of enemies that will sneak up behind you and run and hit you and then you'll just instantly die like right there if i would have got hit by him i'd have to go back to the house which is uh not fun She's like, no, Poro, Poro's in the school. So we're gonna, we need to find a different way into the school. Uh, but like I said originally, very atmospheric game. Uh, don't really get much of that uh, anymore. Uh, what's funny is I think you can buy the soundtrack. I think it comes with the game, like a, the deluxe edition of the game. And I've always, I never got it. And I'm just wondering how many songs are on that, uh, on that soundtrack. Uh, the ending theme of this game is really good. It's a really beautiful piano uh, piece. Clearly it's just a All single. Right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's a single. <laughs> All right. So we have to like pick up that note or look at that note in order to find out there's a hole in the fence. So now we're in the school or at least the, the grounds of the school. We actually don't go inside the school. Spooky plastic bag. Uh-oh. Definitely, if none of you have ever played this game, is I'm is pretty sure it's only like 10 bucks. And it goes on sale a lot. And it's, it's definitely worth playing. All right, we're just going to keep continuing down. We're actually going to come up to a statue. Right here. We're going to give it a coin. It's going to ask if we want to teleport, and we're not going to teleport right now. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's a shoe. It's Sis's shoe. Here comes the mean dog that uh, our protagonist thought uh, was Poro, but sadly it was not. Apparently, uh, someone in the chat has checked <laughs> the soundtrack has one song, and it's the main theme. So, Eck, you were correct that it is indeed a single. Oh, yeah. I know my vinyl very well. I have a very whole nice, closet full of records. <laughs> All right. So, apparently, that wasn't Poro, sad face. But uh, it has Sis's shoe, and... You know, our little protagonist wants to get that shoe back. Before we do that uh, and force ourselves to backtrack for no reason, we're going to go get a key that's up here. And we're going to be coming across these uh, uh, yokai that have ears, or like moving ears. Essentially, what this means is I am not allowed to sprint. If I sprint, they will instantly go straight at me. And we're going to grab that key and die. Yes, dying is very violent. Blood sounds and what sounds like uh, you're being eaten. It's pretty brutal. Ugh. What's funny is I love how they use the same model for Poro's body, but they just put the big silly head on. All right, there's an enemy up here. These guys will aggro pretty easy. They'll like run up to you and then then attack. That's the great thing about them, though is that they they take a long time to swing at you so you can just usually can walk by them with no problems hey there's chickens hello chickens the chickens were hiding the pool key they like to go swimming apparently so once again we're gonna get eaten just so we can teleport back and then right here we need to be really careful because the dog's gonna jump out 
what you have to do right there is you have to like basically you don't want to keep sprinting you actually want it to try to bite you so at that point i'm letting go of sprint and then hitting sprint again every time it tries to bite it'll try to bite you three times and then it'll move on and now we have now we're at the pool now little rng right here is the enemy placement of these two guys and it's not looking good let's see where he's gonna be Mm. Okay. Now, where's the other guy? Yeah, he's in a good spot. So, those guys are always... Like, enemy positioning isn't always the same. And that's what's going to be, like, the biggest amount of time loss you're ever going to experience in this game. Uh, especially, well, that and dying, I guess. Other than that, like, only RNG is the... Uh, enemy placements we got some goldfish with big old eyes but we're not going to mess with them we are however going to look inside this drain and there's a it's a wet bone we're going to try to feed that to that yokai dog and then we're going to have this guy come over here and give us a kiss there we go and we're teleported back here and the big dog is gonna jump scare us again there we go we already are coming to the end of the school. Uh, the way these chapters are kind of uh, identified, I mean, I mean, you can identify them as like the school or the intro or whatever, but they actually identify them as different parts of the night. So like this part of the night is considered the evening. And while the end of the game is like late night, you know, uh, uh, dawn essentially is about to happen. All right, we're going to give the uh, dog friend the wet bone. Sorry, I had to click out on my stream real quick. Uh, there we go. And he got, he got himself a treat, and he's not going to bother us anymore. So thankfully, we're going to be able to get Sis's shoe. There it is. We can give that back to Sis when we uh, see her. All right, that's the school. Next is the rice fields. Now we're going to have a little bit of... Oh! What? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm brain farting. I apologize. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know either. I can't even give you... I can't even help. We're going to have like a reference to to, to, to to something, I guess. I don't homage. know. I'm, an homage. That's the word I was thinking of. Uh, thank you, Ek. This is why This is why we're friends. Hey, well, there you go. Big brain. I don't have one. I drop mine all the time. Oh. All right, so kind of I avoid these manholes. I always forget to do that. And then we're going to come up here to the top left. This guy is a jerk. As you can see, I, it's it's very, very clutch if you get past that guy. And there's also another dude over here, too. And your stamina just keeps getting lower and lower. You have to just keep balancing it. If I didn't say this earlier, your stamina will go down a lot faster if enemies are nearby. I think I did say that. Uh right there there's two enemies so your stamina goes whew, goes super down all right does anybody recognize this wacky character in horror it's not the train no oh. is it huey oh goodbye friend All right, now we're at the rice fields. And once again, we are going to put a coin in the Jinzo statue and avoid the spooky mouth on the ground that wants to eat us. So there's something on the other side of this bridge, but the bridge is broken. So we need to go find a plank of wood. Yes, it's Sadako. Yes. 
That was the person I was thinking of. It wasn't Huey, so, was it? I wish it was. We just dodged two big spooky enemies. Dodged a third. That This part is actually kind of clutch. It's really silly. By the way, were you thinking of, of Huey from Hunting Ground? Yeah, I thought it was a dog. Oh. Oh. I'm looking on a small I, screen. You have to forgive me on this one. I mean, you are right. I mean, fair enough. Hey, look at that thing. <laughs> you just walked in. I have to. It's easier. To, it's, it, it, it's quicker. Dying is faster. I don't want her to die because she's so adorable, but... She is adorable. And she has the cute hair bow. It is the bow, and she has a little bunny backpack. It's so adorable. When you say it really ties the outfit together. I... Yep. Sure does, Zach. <laughs> Good job. Uh, you didn't. You, you thought. Uh, you thought I'd forget. I was hoping you would. I never do. All right. So now we're going to get chased by... Uh, only this person is only known as woman in the rice fields doesn't really have a name but she will attack with throw up and her hair uh when she does throw up it's really cute i just want you to know that like the throw up sound she makes is like a little burp is it exploding into like the black spike ball oh that no that's her attacking with her hair oh. <laughs> yeah she'll vo she'll throw up and it'll be like eh. Okay, good. Uh, that the, the, her when she attacks with her hair and explodes like that, that's a pretty big hitbox. So what I'm trying to do is the second that she gets close, she's gonna stop. So I'm actually gonna stop and look at her and like start running towards her, and then immediately start walking the other direction. And also our flashlight just broke, so that's unfortunate. And we're gonna keep getting chased. Oh, there's that little burp. That's funny. Uh, the vomit is definitely the easier thing to dodge. Ugh, God, it's so scary. I'm so afraid of that. Uh, please stop chasing me. Thank you. Alright. Just gonna start attacking us one more time. We're gonna have to dodge one more attack. Oh, little burp. That's fine. And... Right here, you have a choice between two paths. If you go up, you die. That's just how it is. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. And if you go down, you actually beat the chapter. If you go up there, you actually just instantly die. And you're going to see why. Uh, since uh, this uh, the woman in the rice fields apparently died a very, very tragic death. Uh, apparently, she was murdered. Uh, she was pushed off the uh, off this cliff. And she's kind of like a res uh, resentful spirit because she wants her necklace back. Since we found the necklace and returned it to her original body, she can now be at peace. So sadly, uh, while we, uh, as we were trying to find our sister, we did not find any traces of her. We did help a resentful spirit. So that's, that's a big plus in my book. And our little protagonist walks away, but she is a absolute sweetheart. What does she do? Comes over here, picks a flower, and leaves it. Good job, Kotomo. And even the spirits like is gonna she's gonna manifest right here. It's like wow. Alrighty, so that was the rice fields. Definitely one of the can be one of the scary parts in the run, especially if you die. But there are going to be a lot more scary, uh, even more scarier parts, I should say. Because next we are going to uh, the forest. This area can be a little sketchy. This time we're going to go, I guess, south. There's Poro. This time it really is Poro. It's not just like some spooky, big-headed dog. Uh, 
Yay, we got a cat spawn. That's that doesn't happen all the time. Another train. Essentially, if you're exploring the town and not doing like the actual story stuff, uh, uh, those uh, the basically the, the train crossing is gonna be down. So when it's time for you to actually go into these different areas, then uh, that train will come by and you can move on essentially. Alrighty, almost there. This place is really far away. So now we're kind of like, you know, we live in like the little suburb town. And this is kind of like the city part, like the city area. And we're going to offer... Did I? Oh, I don't have a coin. Why don't I have a coin? I'll fix that. Watch out for that guy. So I got to improvise here because I guess I forgot to pick up a coin, which is not a big deal because coins are absolutely everywhere in this game. Well, cool. Now there's a spooky eyeball. Hello, spooky eyeball. How are you doing? I really need to put a coin in that statue just because uh, I'm gonna. I need it for teleportation purposes later. But like I said, coins are absolutely everywhere in this game. So uh, it is scary if you're doing like a, a world record attempt in this, or you're trying to get a really good PB. Because you don't ever want to just like, you only want to use the coins when you have to and it, on the statues that you need to be able to use to teleport up because there's no point in saving any other another time. Oh no. It's going to get us. Oh no, there's two. What do we do? 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 What does this say? Get in the bush and hide and cover our eyes. They're not doing a really good job at finding you, are they? They're not, they're not. Like apparently, just just hiding in the bush. It's it's safe. She's like barely in there too. She's like on the side of it. <laughs> she... And we're just gonna squeeze past this guy. Gotta be careful. Those things have obviously have huge hitboxes. They also make they have really crazy faces. Alrighty. Now we are coming up here. There should be a coin on this path, actually, now that I think about it. All right, good. We're back on track with coins. That's what I'd like to see. And Poro has guided us into uh, the forest. Now, this is going to be an area where I'm not going to be using my flashlight a lot, which, of course, can be kind of scary because we need the flashlight in order to see enemies. The main reason is we get a new enemy type, and it's these big boulders. If these boulders come in contact with any sort of light, uh, they will attack you. So I gotta be, I have to use my light at very specific points. Like right here, after I get past this guy, I need to find where that guy is, which of course he was in a good spot. And we get jump scared by a, a little spider and the spider is just there to blind us for a little bit. It's kind of weird because this only happens once. This is the only time this ever happens in the game. And there is an enemy there that I can't see. So I'm hope I'm just hoping he's in a good spot. Ooh, he attacked us. Ooh, thankfully he was not in front of us. Ooh, that's scary. Again, like I said, uh, if I die, I go back to that Jinzo statue that I saved at uh, in the city. So, all right. So now we're going to get blocked right here and you're probably wondering what we need to do well we just picked up some uh matches so we're gonna throw the matches and the matches will activate those enemies this is how we're gonna get past them we can also throw them uh as distractions also these uh statues most of them are fake there's only like a couple of them in the forest that you have uh you have in order to use a safe point all right, this area can be a little clutch because there is a guy here and we need to dodge him. And then there's one more up here, but thankfully I can use my light. Okay, got past him. Ooh, spooky. It's, if they attack instantly, this would be a way harder game. But since they don't, it's it has... You got a little bit of leeway.
All right, now we have a bunch of these guys blocking the path. We're just going to throw a match. And they're going to go up there and attack the match. We're almost done with the forest. We just have to get past all these big spooky eye mouths. Uh, get away from me. Oh, okay. Super clutch. Let's go. Alrighty. So that's pretty much the forest. Um, everybody, uh, we're about to see Poro. And this is uh, definitely the saddest scene in the game. So, Sadder than the intro? You, this, is, this is way sadder than the intro. 100%. Oh, no. It's Poro. Poro, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Let's go home, Poro. Please wake up. The game makes you press A, by the way. This is like, it, it makes you keep checking. That's why it hurts. I like games that do that. I'm not going to lie. And now she's sad. But our protagonist is a very, very, very strong person. He's like, there's no time for crying. She builds a nice little uh, burial area for, for Poro. Nice little tombstone, little marker. And because she's a big sweetie, of course, much like how she did with the women in the rice, the woman in the rice field gets a flower and puts it on the grave. I'm sorry, chat. I told you this is the war this is the saddest part in the game. Yeah, post all your, your good doggo emote. I don't know if Pup Time is very happy of this one though. I I I don't think so. Don't tell Pup Time, chat. Don't tell Pup Time. Uh someone asked, it wasn't the dog run over. The dog was hit and flung down into the woods. That's essentially what happened to Poro. And of course, just after having a nice sweet moment, we're about to get hit by a train. Isn't that wonderful? Thankfully, the train wasn't real. Uh, silly as it is, the train actually guided us to Poro's collar. So now at least our, our protagonist has some a little memento, but of course she is still very upset. She feels so bad because she feels like it's her fault. And it's not her fault, man. It, it was just an accident. But, you know, being so young. Alrighty. Uh, no more sad, I promise. Only happy times now. Well, happy spooky times. But, but, but you know. Alright, next is... We're actually going to teleport... Not going to give a coin. We are going to teleport back to the area we were just at. But this time around, we actually are going to explore this like city area a little bit more. Also, got to be careful because there are going to be enemies. I didn't need to pick that up. I just was curious what it was. I couldn't remember. Where are you running, enemy? Where are you at? I know you're gonna come. You always you always do this right here. And you did it in the very annoying spot. I hate you. Those things are so scary. All right, this area is actually one of the cool uh, one of the cool areas. I, I I really enjoy this area a lot. So, in a uh, Japanese lore, like especially when it comes to demons and stuff, they will use salt to uh, ward away evil spirits and stuff. So these uh, little tricksters are getting rid of these salt piles, which is going to allow all these different kinds of yokai to uh, be, uh, try to, I guess, start attacking us. So the whole objective of this mission is to find the salt <laughs> and put it back on those little uh, platforms or little plates. A hey, good question. Also, we get to answer Sure, we're gonna go in the matrix real quick, but okay. You first. No, you're good. We're oh, my thing come now. later. My thing come later. 
Are you sure? Yeah. Mine's a dumb question. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So this is the Cinepede uh, uh, spirit. This is actually a good spirit. This is actually the spirit that protects the town. That's why it's uh, it's everywhere. Uh, of course, our little protagonist doesn't know that yet. So we've got a couple of enemies right here. These guys like to react to move. Well, I hit one. That's beautiful. Thankfully, we have checkpoints here. Uh, those guys can be a little annoying to deal with, especially if they are in bad uh, spots. Yeah, chat. If we need salt, you you do you know what to post? It's like the letters. Now it's salt. Yeah. See, like that. These these guys like to teleport. They're really quick. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, we're good. We're good. Run, 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 run. Go, 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 go. Okay. So this is the shrine for the centipede, and we're gonna go up here, and the centipede's gonna be like, hey, get away from here. Someone mentioned in chat, by the way, the centipede's not doing a very good job of warding off the ghost. <laughs> I, I mean, there's all these all these spooky things happening. It, it has, a, has a hard job. He's doing his best. I think people need to go pray to the centipede a little bit more if that's the guardian. Maybe no. Maybe people don't realize that this uh, town is being attacked by a bunch of yokai. All right, so time for my dumb question. All right, well, go for All it. All right, so salt, uh, you know how like spilling salt is bad luck, right? Of course. Is there a way to counteract that? Don't you throw it over your shoulder? That works, uh, right? Go, what, where, where, where is this going? Oh, no, I spilled salt over the weekend. I threw it over my shoulder. I just wanted to remember. Because I feel like I might be going through a series of bad luck soon. No, I mean, yeah, that's that's what you do. That's the traditional way of doing it. I think it's over sure. your right shoulder. Wait, right? I think it's your, I think it's your right shoulder. I thought shoulder. it was left. I don't know. I'm only guessing. Maybe chat might know. Because I threw it over my left shoulder, and I'm worried. I'm superstitious, man. Well, there, you know, there's a saying for that, right? What? For for that, uh, you assault, salt as you fly, hit the devil in the eye. That is the saying for it. What does it mean? It means you salt, salt as you fly, hit the devil in the eye. In terms of, but all evil things get away from me. Oh, hey, it is the left. I was right. Okay, cool. I was right. All right, uh -huh. good, good, good. I was I was trolling you. I knew it the whole time. Oh, of course. Thank you, chat. <laughs> chat, you're, you're the best. Also, shout outs to Hey Arnold, uh, the cartoon from Nickelodeon. Uh, Grandpa in that show is the one that said that, and it like was burned into my brain. But come to find out, it's actually a thing. Oh, yeah. All right, so we found two keys during this uh, salt talk, which is awesome. This just allows us to get through these two gates. And this will be the last place that we're going to put salt down. These other yokai are really spooky. They have mouths on their tummies. Wait, if you don't say the thing, does it not work or no? I doubt it. Uh -oh. I think you're just supposed to do it. Oh. I think you're just supposed to I think you're just supposed to throw the salt and you're fine. Yeah, that's my guess. I didn't say the right, thing. So, I mean, you're fine. All right. Okay, so that was that. this area. This is the centipede area, is like I like to call it. You get to see the big centipede. And even right here, we're going to pick up a couple of things. Protagonist is like, oh, the centipede isn't here. You got a charm and some warding salt. And of course, the protagonist is like, hey, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a bad spirit. Because it wasn't. It was actually a very good spirit. So we did get warding salt, and we can actually use that to make uh, enemies uh, go far away from us. But sadly, we, we will not be using it in the run. Casually, it can be very helpful. Now, the next area is the factory, but thank goodness we're going to have a yokai taxi pick us up. And we're just going to go straight there. So the thing that just captured us, you might have seen it throughout the run. It's been appearing and disappearing in certain spots. Uh... That yokai is known as, or spirit, I should say, is uh, Mr. Yomawari, as it's uh, called. It's actually like the uh, mascot for the game <laughs> and does appear in the second game as well. 
Uh, Mr. Yomwari likes to take people away. Oh. But uh, Mr. Yomwari also has a different form, and that form is called Meat. And Meat is going to be chasing us uh, throughout this area. Uh, if I... This is where, like, I might start dying a lot because the hitbox on this thing is huge. All right, so Meat knows we're in the factory, of course, because Meat brought us here. Now we're going to go up here. Took a little bit of an angle to dodge some enemies because there are some enemies uh, down there that I don't want to deal with. And we're actually going to come across a new enemy. They, they showed up a little earlier, but I just used them for uh, uh, death abuse. So you really didn't get to see what they do. They're called child drawings. And the child drawings have a very unique property. If my back is towards them and I'm close, they will start running at me. They have, it's a... Uh, think of like uh, booze from Mario. It, it uses those rules. And this is one of the areas I might die, like I said, because uh, meat's going to be trying to kill us. And it's really, really hard to dodge when you are being uh, drained of stamina. So right here, I'm going to keep my flashlight on this, this little drawing. I don't want it to get any closer. And then right here, meat's going to spawn in front of us. And let's see what see if we can do this. It's like I said, this is really obnoxious to deal with. Oh. Get away. I just need this key. Okay, now we can go over here and die. There we go. Beep boop beep boop beep boop beep boop beep. beep, beep, beep. Little pitter patters. All right, now that we got a key. This key goes to like a silo or something in the factory. So we're gonna go to that silo now. The factory is actually a pretty big area. And we're gonna have four enemies. We're gonna need to dodge in a second. Like I said, uh, these are gonna be those enemies that like have to wind up to hit you. Uh, sometimes though, uh, they're just in weird positions to where. You're probably going to get hit, so let's see what happens. All right, there's one of them. Another one. There's... Oh, oh man. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We did it. We did it. We did the thing. Uh, meat's going to jump on this car. And then we're immediately just going to go down. That's going to be able to dodge him. I, I had to do like an... I, I, I figured out a strat that I thought was efficient to get past that. But then, uh, like I said, I haven't run this game in three years and the current world record holder found out if you just run up to the car and not like to the left of the car, uh, you could just immediately bypass me. And I was doing like intricate setups that I never thought of just like starting in a different position. All right, this was the area that's locked and we need one more key. This key is actually gonna be the exit key to the gate. Uh, but of course, meat is going to show up and uh, ooga booga. And we're going to have one little child drawing up here that's going to be in a very spooky spot. And we're just going to play it safe. Usually you can take the chance and try to run past it. But why do that? All right, we got the front gate key. And we're just going to get killed by the child drawing. And here's the last encounter with meat. We'd have to, hopefully our stamina is good enough. Oh, that was super close. That's, uh, it just gives you enough. And honestly, I don't think if you, if you don't do like the stutter step that I do to get the stamina back a little quicker and to move a little bit quicker, I don't think you can like actually do it. I think the game is like forces you to learn something for that part because like when i when i played this casually i had the hardest time getting past past that and at the same time developed you know speedrun strats at the same time so 
And before we leave, we're going to go to this crate. And apparently there's something in here. Oh, spooky hands. Uh, what is the current world record? It's like 4712. And forgive me, I do not remember the person's name, but I will correct that shortly. I can check it. Let's see. It is... It's a, a Toku TK from Japan. Yeah, there's a, there's not very many runners for this game. There's only like six people. And then not, of, you know, there's not, I think Toku might have been the only active person or at least the most recent active person. And there's only like two people that run Midnight Shadows. That's a long game, though. Like I said, it's a, it's a pretty long one. I do want to give a special shout out to the uh, RTN Japan speedrunning community. There's a lot of good runners there, especially a lot of good horror no, runners. for sure. So. For sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, fun story on my end, because, you know, I run the show here. I do a lot of games myself. People would not be aware of that. Um, recently, I've been running a game called Siren, and one of the Japanese Siren speedrunners has been kind of coming in when I've been running the game and telling me, oh, hey, here's how you do blank strat. I'm like, wait, that she's great. Thank you. I remember, like, I, I, I rated your channel, then you you said that. You're like, yeah, we're doing Siren. I have, like, someone from the community, and they're like teaching me so many things. Oh, yeah, like, awesome. I cut down my time by, like, I think already five minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. So they're very well I've never seen things. Siren. That's a very, very fun game. You should play it. Right? Oh, did we get a... Oh, we got the big baby. We got the big baby. That never... That, that hardly ever happens. Sometimes we get a, a person in the window, but getting the big baby, that never happens. Alrighty, so now we are in the final area. Um, we're heading to the final area. The final area is actually going to be where we uh, kind of started the game. And I noticed that I used a coin, which I don't think it's going to be a big deal. It might. Just have to play well. That's all I'm saying. There should be another coin. If there's not another coin, I'll be very, very surprised. I'm just a lot of running right here. Nothing, nothing too much. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Now, here we go up here. Now, we're, we're going to be hand, uh, heading to the uh, the shrine of the mountain spirit. And the mountain spirit's a very evil spirit. This one uh, is the reason why all these uh, yokai are everywhere. It's a very controlling spirit. Very vengeful, very angry. So we're going to enter, get introduced to a, another mechanic, and it's these little, like, little shrine thingies. And they're going to light up for us, and uh, light hurts these enemies that are coming up. Also, Meat's here and is very angry that we impaled him. But now we're going to have a big old monster fight. Meat versus Eyeball Hand. Nom, 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 nom. Place your bets, chat. Neat. Oh, never mind. Ah, sadly, meat gets bodied. I immediately lost my bet. <laughs> All right, so this final area is a little... It's it's kind of trolly, man. Uh, so those big eyeball... The big eyeball hand we just saw. Uh, yeah, that thing is going to be up spawning a lot here essentially these are going to be like little running gauntlets trying to get to these uh the shrines that light up that's going to be the main goal do i have a coin i do have a coin so we're okay i'm glad i have an extra coin and i'm going to go ahead and use it right here so if we do die, I will respawn somewhere close. Because if I do, if I would have died here at any point, I go back to the house. So that's minutes lost.
Someone saying that I'm saying immediately and I'm missing the D and I'm very mad if I'm actually saying meat and making a meat pun when I shouldn't be. I blame Ecdysis. I take the blame. I think it's fair. I really, uh... What's the word? I don't really butcher the mood of the puns, huh? Yes, you, you <laughs> to no, 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 not at all. <laughs> you almost said yes. I, I was trying to be nice. Okay, so we're about to come up to a uh, big hand and the big hands are spooky. So we're gonna get a free dodge right here. And essentially how these hands work, they will move to the last place you were. Right here, we have a clutch dodge. This one is really hard to do. You actually have to wait there a split second. If you try to immediately dodge that hand, you will die every single time. All right. This hand right here is really annoying, so hopefully he doesn't break. I need to come at him from an angle. So what happens with this guy, if you come at him directly, like if you were to go like this way, like, like diagonally up like that, he'll get stuck. And then the second you try to walk past him, then he'll move and then kill you every single time. It's really frustrating. All right, we gotta dodge one more big hand. And we actually have a boss fight. We do fight the mountain spirit. But the it, it's a very simple boss fight because we're going to... Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I learned this for the 12-hour challenge. Took me a couple hours uh, to learn it and then do a run. So I didn't really dive into like strategies a lot for this game. I just kind of figured out my own tech and then went from there and then got record and then never played it again. Now, I read something before this uh, run started like uh, a few hours ago that says when I'm in this final boss fight, if I turn off my flashlight, I won't be chased by enemies. And if that's true, then that eliminates a lot of RNG in this fight. So I'm about to find out for something for myself right now. And this is the Mountain Spirit. It's very, very spooky. I like to call it Legion, kind of like the boss from Castlevania, you know, because it's a bunch of bodies together. All right, let's see what happens here. No, they still chase. I, w I was lied to. Don't trust uh, Wikipedia pages, friends. I need these hands to be a little more together. The only thing we need to do is light six shrines, and then that's the fight. It's super easy. That's four. We need two more. Gonna play it safe. And one more. Uh, time is coming up. I'll let you know when, when that is. And that's the boss fight, at least. Spooky. All right, and we got our sister back. Of course, we're, our, our protagonist is very scared that Gensis is going to die. Also, if you guys paid really close attention, when the protagonist is talking, it's like chalk. It's like a little chalk font. But when Sis is talking, it's a very uh, stylized, very neat font. It's really, it's really cool. All right. The reason we don't split or we don't call time at the boss fight ending is because we do have to move right here. Of course, the game is not done until all movement actions are complete. So we're going to take Sis home. There's a problem, though. The mountain spirit's a kind of a jerk. 
and is like, you know what? You can have your sister, but I want something in return. So, sadly, we don't get to leave unscathed. Uh, the mountain spirit's gonna take her eye. Oh. Yeah, a little brutal. Uh, time is coming up. Time. GG. Very nice. GG. I'll let this say. A... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I did not see that coming. Oh, did you not? Um... Yeah, like, uh, what's really cool is, like, in some of the other... I think it's in the credits, like, uh... Our, our little protagonist girl is gonna... Ha she'll have, like, a little eye patch. All right. So, I... Yeah, the only thing we're gonna see right here is the protagonist, uh... Moving on, essentially. Just being like, bye, Poro, and Poro's going to go wander off into spooky land. Or move on, at least. It's like not spooky land. Go into doggy heaven. And that's it. Should be roll credits. And this is the song. The one song in the game. All right, well, that's but, going. Uh, I want to say thank you once again, Star, yep. for doing the run here. As well, uh, for the usual questions, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give? Oh, for sure. Uh, shout outs to everyone in the spooky speedrunning community and just everyone that speedruns in general. Isn't it a great hobby we have to be able to do things like this? It is. Uh, uh, I'll also shout myself out. Uh, I speedrun spooky games all the time, much like Ecdysis. Ecdysis speedruns way more spooky games than me, but I definitely have a variety as well. Um, be we've been doing visage a lot lately trying to get record in that so if you guys are fans of spooky games come out to twitch.tv slash starwind and have a good old time that beats my second uh, question that's where can they find you if they want to find you and what do you do uh, i do the thing hey i this is my first time here of course of course that's how you like the puns oh no exactly okay but yeah, if you want to check out Starwind, the link is in chat. And I do want to say thank you once again, Starwind, for showcasing Yomawari. I really like this game. Always. Always. Yeah. Before we hop on off, anything else you'd like to add on in? Uh... Nope. I'll say hi, Juho, in the chat. I see you. And hey, we'll be seeing more Juho at one point or another. He finds his way back. He does a lot of games I like. What can I say? He does. Anyway... That being said, we are about done with the show for tonight. I hope that you enjoyed this collection of cute games. I will say that we have a lot of horror going on. We are the bi-weekly horror hotfix, so if you do like that, consider coming back for, you know, future shows. We will be here back in two weeks, and that episode's actually going to be very fun, because that's going to be a Thanksgiving episode. So I hope that you get to oh. enjoy the embrace of that. I'm just going to give the hint for the next theme. Thanksgiving is the theme, or at least something I related to that. Ooh, okay, I gotta, I gotta think about that. That's interesting. I already have the games in mind for that, and it should be a fun time. As well... Oh, I guess there... Sorry, I guess there was an end, another ending cutscene, but continue. It's, it, there's nothing important. Just keep going. All good. Uh, as well, tomorrow at 7 p.m., we'll be having the first step with Metroid Dread. If you want to check that out, that will be there. Anyway, we're going to be wrapping on for the night, so have a good rest of the day and or night, and see you next time.